Madam Deputy Clerk. Oh, where's our deputy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can start with her. Go ahead. Okay. This meeting is called to order. Councilwoman Rebecca Perone, Councilwoman Samantha Whitfield, Councilwoman Dr. Tiffany Worthy. Present. Deputy Mayor Nathaniel Anderson. Present. And Mayor Kaya McIntosh. Present. Proceed. We will now have the prayer, Reverend Gary Toom Souter. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. <laughs> May we now stand for the flag salute. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, 
under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, this is to announce that adequate notice of this meeting was provided in the following manner. Advance written notice of this meeting was posted on the bulletin board in the municipal complex and was mailed to the Burlington County Times, the Intelligencer and the Courier Times. Advance written notice of this meeting was filed with the township clerk. The clerk is directed to enter into the minutes of this meeting this public announcement. Mayor. Thank you very much. Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to see everyone. Um, we will start off with our manager's update. Good evening, Mayor and Council members and members of the public. I just want to first off make a note on how bright it is. Like we can see you very clearly. Um, this is evidence that the ESIP program is moving forward here in Willingboro as they're continuing to swap out our lights to LED lights and uh, it's happening all over. Uh, our community. I did submit to you all the our formal uh, monthly report, which was quite substantial. Um, and I'm just going to give you just a synopsis of some minor things, major, major things, but uh, we have a lot to discuss tonight. So I don't want to bog down with uh, uh, things, uh, reviews. But anyway, as you may notice that the county is in the process of uh, milling and paving on v Veterans uh, Parkway. They will be redoing Veterans Parkway from JFK um, Boulevard down to Millennium Drive. They are currently working on the concrete portion, replacing sidewalk curbings and handicap ramps. And when they uh, finish that, they will begin the uh, milling and paving process along uh, JFK, I mean, uh, Veterans Parkway. On April 10th, our office was notified um, by our Department of Public Works of a severe erosion at a property uh, on 460 Charleston Road, directly above the existing storm outfall pipe from Charleston Road. Uh, we had a, an engineer, Remington Vernick, go out and conduct an investigation of that area, and it was discovered that the existing end of the outfall had collapsed, causing severe erosion, bank failure, falling trees, um, damaging adjacent property, and the potential to comprise or compromise existing utility poles at the rear of that property. Um, their recommendation is, was that we, that the outfall be replaced immediately. In its current condition, the existing outfall pipe presents an immediate danger or hazard to the public and warrants an emergency replacement to avoid a potential catastrophic failure. The anticipated repair attached to this will be approximately $260,000. And we are preparing the paperwork to perform an emergency repair without going to bid to abate this situation. Uh, we do have funding available in prior capital projects to cover the expense. However, we may need to reappropriate some funds, which, we, which would be done um, by ordinance at our next meeting. So we are going to engage a contractor to begin to uh, abate that situation uh, immediately. And I wanted to bring it to your attention. There has been discussion about creating potentially a 501c3, uh, which would enable the, the municipality to receive charitable contributions. Uh, however, you know, in New Jersey, towns can't directly establish 501c3 nonprofit organizations, um, but there are some workarounds, possibly a 501c3 partnership, um, which I don't really have a lot of knowledge or experience in. So I, again, I'm going to defer to our solicitor if she could maybe possibly do a, an analysis or review of what the council could do uh, in that capacity um, to uh, establish the goals that they are trying to accomplish. I will remind everyone uh, that the financial disclosure statements are due. Um, if you have not received that information, uh, I did send out a link to um, the members of the governing body in case uh, you needed just a reminder. And um, I don't know if that information has been provided to our boards and commissions. Okay, good. Be sending it out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we are still working on our tree ordinance, uh, which is the state is looking for all of the municipalities to move forward with introduction of those ordinances sometime in May. Um, they did host several um, sessions uh, discussing those. Uh, our our environmental commission uh, members did attend some of those discussions, so we will be co co collaborating with them uh, in the construction of our tree ordinance. Uh, and we would hope to have something presented to you for your consideration, probably at our second meeting in May. Uh, I'm going to ask Ms. Jackson if she would come at this time and uh, update us on all of the wonderful happenings that are going on in Willingboro over the next couple of weeks. Ms. Jackson. Good evening. Four days away from this year's Spring Clean Community Center. So that will be on Saturday, April 20th, beginning at 9 o'clock at the Kennedy Center. Plan to come out and join us as we come together as a team and unify our community, churches, community organizations, groups, girls, Boy Scouts, all of that. Everybody's invited. The registration is still available on our website. We will be giving away t shirts and thanks to a generous donation from Chick fil A in Arlington. We will have Chick fil A sandwiches available at Dr. Clyde's lab for those in attendance. Mm -hmm. Clean up and get your sandwiches. What's going on? No, I don't have a mic. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We are looking forward to a great day. So all are welcome to that. And alongside the cleanup event, those with a green thumb are invited to our Earth Day garden opening, which will uh, is a plant and seed swap that's hosted by Go Grow event. And that event will be held from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So after stopping by to assist us with the cleanup, we want you to head over to the garden to plant and seed swap. And also going on that day is the Kappa Classic, which is being hosted by the Willingboro Fort Dix McGuire Alumni Chapter. This is a collaboration between the Kappas and the Willingboro Police Department. And the games begin at 10 a.m. and will be held, also be held at the Kennedy Center. So we invite you to be a part of that very, very busy day. Tomorrow is the last day we're accepting applications for our Citizen Fire Academy. So if you're interested in learning more about our fire, how our de fire department works, consider signing up to be a part of the academy and more information is available on our website. And then on next Saturday, April 27th is the volunteer fair hosted by Willenburg Hands and the Willenburg Community Development Corps. And this is a great opportunity for like-minded individuals to come together, network and promote vol volunteerism in the community. So um, our mayor will be bringing us greetings and Senator Sing Singleton will be the keynote speaker we are inviting nonprofit organizations to be a part of that and inviting residents to come who are interested in learning more, uh, learning about more opportunities to volunteer. Also on Saturday from April 27th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. is the community and wellness event. This is a collaboration between Cooper University, Healthcare, and other partners in recognition of National Minority Health Month. So there will be screenings, health resources, cooking demos, and a number of tools you can use to ensure you're on the road to good health and wellness. This event will be held at the Kennedy Center. No registration is necessary. Applications are still available for our Youth Police Academy and our Youth Fire Academy. So, and these spots will fill up fast. So secure your spot today if you're interested um, in being a part of that experience. And lastly, we want to remind you that the 2024 Phenomenal Women Awards event will be held on Sunday, April 28th at the Kennedy Center at three o'clock. The deadline to purchase tickets was this past Friday, but Eventbrite has reopened and will be open into the close of business on Thursday, Thursday, April 18th. So if you did not purchase your ticket, please do so today. We're looking forward to a phenomenal event. Tickets are $55 and can be purchased via Eventbrite. And one more thing before I sit down, the Friday night music series is, um, was gonna kick off on Friday, May 10th at the amphitheater. Live music will be held on the second and fourth Friday during the months of May, June, and July. Genres include Latin, gospel, Caribbean, R&B. So we're looking forward to that upcoming music series that will be held at the amphitheater on the second and fourth Friday. 
As always, this information can be found on our website, social media platforms, our YouTube channel, or by subscribing to Willingboro Weekly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Mayor, also with us this evening, we have uh, our engineer, Hugh Doherty from Pannoni, uh, who is here to give a brief update to the governing body on the Performing Arts Center, uh, where we are and where we are going. Uh, Mr. Doherty. Mr. Harris. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Appreciate the opportunity to speak before you. I did speak with Mr. Harris and Dr. Worthy last week on the progress of the theater, and Mr. Harris wanted to bring me uh, here to just bring the council up to date. And I am actually looking for some feedback as well. Now, just to give you a quick background, our original design for the theater, if you recall, uh, prior to our involvement, was a two uh, two point eight million dollars, and it was deemed too expensive at the time, so bids were rejected. And in March 2021, at council's request we prepared a master plan for the JFK Center. In September 21, uh, 2021, we pursued a black box concept and developed concept and discussed that at length. And in, in September 2022, a year later, we moved away from the black box concept in favor of the Performing Arts Center and the theater concept. In October 2022, uh, we value engineered the, the theater design and we looked at cost savings and recommended a phasing of the work to accommodate the, uh, the budget. In December of 2022, we developed phase one plans and specifications, and uh, we completed that and submitted it to council for some feedback. The budget was set at $500,000. In April, 2023, the phase one theater project was advertised. We included a value engineering uh, design of the sound and light system which was appropriate for the space. In August, uh, council awarded that contract to Levy Construction. Uh, the, the price was 927,000. And um, in September of 2000, uh, 2023, work began and the sound system was ordered as we had specified. Progress was going well, and we had anticipated a soft start opening on April 2024, this month actually. Uh, in January 2024, it was brought to our attention for us to reevaluate the sound system based on input from a township recommended vendor, uh, Bobby Duckett. So uh, we, we started uh, talking to Mr. Duckett over the, uh, the course of the last couple months. And in March, the uh, specified sound system that we had in the bid was delivered and stored on site because it had been ordered. And because of the supply chain, uh, we it was was somewhat delayed, but it, we, we received it in March. Uh, ongoing, working with the vendor, we wanted to present a, a change order request to the council. If council wants to proceed with this uh, alternate system, th the issue is the alternate system would require significant structural modifications to the roof and the building itself uh, because of the, the uh, weight of the, the uh, system. The alternate system would also require a significant design effort for us to design the, the uh, roof and supports. The change order for the alternate system is estimated with all the design modifications to 700 to $825,000. This alternate system would, would also push the lead time for delivery date and opening to the fall of 2024. So that brings us to today. I'm, I'm seeking council direction at this point for the alternate sound system as a change order, but due to the cost uh, we must advertise the sound system as a separate uh, item, and then we would seek the lowest responsible bidder for that equipment. At, at this point, quite frankly, um, as the township engineer, I would recommend implementing the sound system as we had specified. If additional sound is needed for special events, uh, we would supplement with rentals from vendors, and there's vendors out there such as Starlight, which Camden County currently uses for some of their venues. But that's where I'm uh, right now. I'm not bringing you up to date of where we are and also basically seeking whether or not we should pursue the change order. Right now? I do. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Worthy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Um, I don't want to go back and forth with the sequence of events, um, but the, the part that was missing um, from the what you provided as the, the plan 
was when council was very clear about what type of uh, performances we wanted to have um, in that theater. And so while yes, we're now looking at this change order, the request was state of the art sound. And we talked about the Grammy nominated artists that would be coming here based on who's from Willingboro, who wanted to come back and to do shows in Willingboro. So while it may appear to be a bit of back and forth, we were happy to find someone that could provide um, that expertise around the sound that would be required. Um, the council didn't want to have a whole new um, performing arts center. And then when it's time to do performances um, of a high of a certain caliber, we've got boxes all over the stage and stuff hanging because it wasn't built in. So I just don't want the representation of the body to be that we haven't decided now we're at this change order we're going back and forth we've lost all this time um panoni played a role along the way with this um this elongated timeline as well as the shift from the black box to the performing arts center we had made a decision and we're clear about moving from that black box theater we didn't wait a year to to provide that feedback as was described in your timeline so i just wanted to be clear for the record that that I appreciate your perspective and your perception of the timeline, but there are some things that I have that I've been tracking alongside that don't quite match up. Um, but here we are today, and it is a huge decision for the governing body to, to be facing now, finding out um, about an $800,000 change order, um, or are we going to go forward with building a performing arts center and have Bluetooth speakers all over the place when it's time to have Adam Blackstone perform at home, which is a bit embarrassing. So um, it is a huge decision, um, but I did my best advocating along the way, but here we are, and we have a huge decision to make. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Dr. Worthing. Anyone else have any comments, questions? Just to piggyback off what Dr. Worthy um, has indicated, I too have met with the gentleman who consulted with us. And when we showed him what we were working with, he said, what we have here is a high school theater. The setup was a high school theater. And the problem for us is, as Dr. Worthy said, when we bring shows in, now we're spending additional money to rent equipment when we should not have to. And that was one of the things that was very clear as we took on this project. Dr. Worthy was very, very articulate in indicating on behalf of council what we wanted. And it's a little disappointing that we're at this point and there's so much confusion here. And to, to uh, the point of Mr. Bobby Duckett, who is, you know, consulted with you because this is what he does. This is his business. We needed that, that, that vision because if we didn't have it, we would be stuck with something that we didn't want, we didn't ask for. So if it was not for him, you know, I think we would be much further back in this process, not understanding what we want and what's being delivered. So it is a bit disappointing. Thank you. Okay, Councilwoman Whitfield. Um, thank you, Mayor. While um, I do think the $800,000 change order is a, a big decision for the council, I think in the long run and what we want to achieve with the Performing Arts Center, it may be the best decision that we can make in order to bring in the acts, the type of performances that we want to bring in. Um, I think overall, we probably end up spending more in rentals over the long run, um, having to rent additional equipment for each performance. Um, so agreeing with Dr. Worthy, it is a big decision, but I think, um, you know, with the intended vision and what we set out to do, I think it may be the best decision to move forward with the change order. Yeah. And I just guess we would have, thank you, Councilman Whitfield. I just guess we would have to look at the impact. What is the impact on the budget and our um, capital, like significant impact? Yeah, we, you, although the, the Performing Arts Theater is pretty much funded as it was designed currently, um, that would be a substantial increase in, in capital, which we really don't have allocated um, in past or present right. capital budgets. Go ahead, Dr. Worthy. I have a follow-up question. Um, if we were to decide to go forward with um, the value engineering design that was provided, um, 
what would it take to be able to do these sorts of modifications at a later point, like in three years or five, like a later point to come back and revisit? So we're having successful shows. We've rented a few things. And now it's like, okay, we see how the theater is going. Now we want to come back. What does that look like? Right. Well, um, because we would have all the chairs uh, in place, the, the theater seats, then that would be um, a bigger undertaking because there does have to be design modification to the roof and the structure. So those would either be protected in some way or removed and then put back. So the time, the time to do it, if we were to do it, would be now, but the, the price tag is, is significant. And my follow-up question is, how much is Pannoni willing to put towards this $800,000 uh, change order? Well, uh, Council, Councilman Worthy, I... Um, you can um, find, have the discussion and come back. I'm sure you don't have that, right, that right. prepared but, with you this I evening. Mean, I mean, yeah, we, we provided the design based on the council input at the time um, so that this is a change order. Uh, the introduction of Mr. Mm -hmm. Bobby Duckett was not until... Uh, January of this year when we had uh, plans prepared uh, last year. Agreed. But as Pastor Gary started the meeting, he actually invoked the spirit to help us to look at the root of issues. And we're not the root. It was a, a lack of, um, it was not bringing to council what we asked for and what we uncovered that it, that the system was not what we asked for. It was through Bobby Duckett, who shared that information with us. So we, it wasn't that the council just changed their mind. And I think that the disconnect and the tension that I'm experiencing with Pannoni is the lack of any acknowledgement of the role that was played by Pannoni as the experts that we've hired to consult so that we did get the appropriate sound system, not for the room, but for the performers and the poor performances that we were very clear about bringing to Willingboro. So I'm really challenged by the lack of any acknowledgement by our experts, um, you know, as we find ourselves in this situation. So I, I don't know, it's, we'll have a collective decision to make, but I'm disappointed that Pannoni doesn't see the role that they played in this. Right, and I understand Dr. Worthy, the, um, the the structural modifications would have would have precluded us from doing it in this phase. So that those speakers that require these structural modifications that would not have fit the budget that we are currently under. So and that's where that's where you know using the the numbers that we're coming up with now, you, you know we had passed that up early on because it's it's just too much. It was too expensive and. As I had mentioned, the $2.8 million was rejected out of hand because it was uh, too expensive. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Right, and I think, you know, to, to further Dr. Worthy, I think the intent of this theater was to be more than an high school theater. I think that's the point I think we're kind of missing. Um, and then we did rely on the expertise of per Pannoni to, to, you know, at least present it, to make, let us make that decision at that moment, whether it was too expensive you know, previous previous to now. Um, so I think that's what we're all kind of a little, you know, frustrated um, is that the intent was to have a state-of-the-art performing center, you know, and we understand things cost differently, but we un my understanding was that we had an adequate sound system at the time, but now, you know, with the input of a um, somebody who's in the business, now we're finding out that it's not adequate or to, or up to the standard that we were looking for. So I think that's where, because we may have had the money, we, we could have prepared to have the money, but I think 800,000 is a lot to, to kind of get together now. So, you know, if you're looking for, you know, when do you need an answer? You need an answer today. We have a, yeah. Well, yeah, um, the project right now is on hold because okay. we have the, the equipment that was specified on um, basically delivered and at the uh, theater, so that um, we've held the contractor up from installing that pending an outcome okay. of the change order. So yeah, we'll have to discuss. We'll have a discussion in executive today um, to see what we, you know, what we're going to do. Great, thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm seeking. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Hubert. Uh, I had also made a commitment to the the governing body that Captain Bucks would come uh, today and do a an update on. Um, crime in, in Willingboro. Um, are you still willing to receive that today or we can? Okay. Captain Bucks, you're up. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Good evening, everyone. Mr. O'Brien, if you could uh, again bring up my PowerPoint for for everyone to see. All right. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Council, Township Manager, Deputy Clerk, you know, Willingboro residents. Um, I'm here tonight to present our 2023 year in review, very similar to what I presented uh, last year. Um, I'll go through probably about 20 slides with a lot of information. Um, I'm, at the end, I'll answer any questions um, that anybody has. So uh, next slide, please. So what we'll be discussing tonight is our calls for service, our cases, homicides, motor vehicle th uh, threats, uh, threats, motor vehicle thefts, the uniform crime report, use of force, internal affairs, our new hires, our community engagement, and then some future projects. Uh, next slide, please. So calls for service, similar to what you know I, I presented last year, and and for uh, some that are that are new to the meeting, a call for service is any call that we are dispatched to. It can range from a barking dog complaint all the way up to a shooting or shots fired. So that is what is considered a cause for service. So what I have displayed is the last five years of our calls for service. And you know, 2020 was that was that COVID year, and it's a little hard to see with the uh, the closed captions uh, underneath. But you can see each year that they have gone up every single year since uh, since 2019. In 2023, our calls for service was 33,000. 932. Next slide, please. This slide is going to show the difference of 2022 versus 2023 on a monthly breakdown. So the blue line is going to show what the what the monthly breakdown was for 2022. And then the red line is obviously 2023. So you can kind of see, you know, uh, the peaks and valleys, what month was a little bit busier uh, than others and compared to what it was the previous year. Next slide, please. So these are some of our higher calls for services that we respond to. They're not every single one that we respond to, but they're some of the higher numbers. The numbers in gold represent 2023 and the numbers in white is the previous year of 2022. So you can see our alarm calls. We responded to 1,481 uh, animal complaints. I know we've had discussion uh, in previous meetings about animal control and, um, and services provided and how are things going. You can see that we responded to 1,437 calls for service for some type of animal complaint, whether it's an aggressive dog, a barking dog, dogs running at large. Um, assist EMS and fire, you know, 5,095. Disputes, you know, domestics, escorts, you know, um, you know, noise complaints. So if you go down to uh, suspicious, suspicious activity, again, that would be an example of somebody calling in and saying, I have a suspicious vehicle or a suspicious person. And that's, you know, what we're responding to. Traffic stops. You can see that we conducted 4,396 uh, motor vehicle stops or traffic stops in 2023, which is slightly higher than the, the previous year. Next slide, please. So now we'll move into cases. What a case is, a case is a incident that needs more. It needs more investigating. So what we have here, an example would be a call for service would be, let's say, an, an alarm call. Once our officers, re, uh, once our officers uh, respond to that location, they may see that the front door is kicked in or some type of forced entry. So now that goes from an alarm call, which would be a call for service, to a burglary and a criminal mischief with a lot more investigation is going to be needed and that becomes a case. So you can see in 2023, there was 2,317, which is a little bit less than the previous year of 2,455. Next slide. So this one again, similar to our calls for service, I broke down our cases uh, with some of our higher cases and you can see our assaults, 121 in 2023 to 126 in 2022. 
burglaries were a little bit lower, domestics were a little bit lower, fraud lower. So if you go over to where you see vehicle theft, we had an increase in vehicle thefts. So um, just we'll get back to that a little bit a little bit further into the presentation when I you know when I talk about um, those that particular number and why that we saw a increase in motor vehicle thefts. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so what I decided to do and present to you guys tonight was um, the homicides that we've had over the last five years. Um, you can see the numbers uh, uh, in front of you. You know, 2019 it was it wasn't a good year for us. But you can see the stuff to the right is seven out of our 10 uh, um, homicides were gun related and all 10 resulted in suspects being charged, arrested and found guilty. So going back year by year in number in, uh, in 2022, there's an asterisk next to that. And what happened was is. In that particular case, the uh, the. In UCR's purposes, it was classified as a homicide but the prosecutor's office didn't charge as a, as a, as a murder or a homicide a uniform crime report. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to that's a little bit farther down too. So that's why there's a little asterisk um, next to 2022, uh, 2021. We had, uh, we had two 2022, we had one and last year we had, we had zero. Next slide, please. So I wanted to, to, show you know the the council and our community you know over the five years what we compare to uh in willingboro to to the rest of the county you know homicides aren't just you know you know specific to to one community they're spread out through an entire community burlington county has 40 municipalities um within burlington <clears throat> county and you see in 2019 we had five the rest of the county you know had a total of 11. 2020, we had two, the rest of the county had 10. 2021, two, versus, 20, uh, versus the rest of the county, 14. 2022, we had one, the rest of the county had 18. And 2023 was zero with the rest of the county at two. So, um, you know, with that, there, it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I have a list of where the homicides occurred, communities such as Mount Laurel, Evesham, uh, Medford, Medford Lakes, Pemberton Borough. You know, it's just, it's, it, it happened. Unfortunately, you know, it, it happens. So this is the uh, next slide, please, please. These are just going to be a little bit further breakdown of the, uh, of the homicides that we had uh, uh, each year. So I'll just kind of read them real quickly. You know, 2019, we had those five. There was the Millbrook Drive. A victim was shot while sitting in their car. The suspect was arrested and sentenced to 60 years. Medley Lane, the victim was shot in the head while sitting in the vehicle. The suspect was arrested and sentenced to life in prison. East Brook, East Brook Lane, two victims were stabbed and the third victim escaped. The suspect was arrested and sentenced uh, 60 years for each victim. Baldwin Lane, the victim was shot while sitting in the car. Two suspects, uh, one was sentenced with uh, to life without the possibility of parole. The other one was still pending a trial. Next slide, please. Roxborough Place. This is the one where it was uh, where it was classified as a homicide in the uniform crime report, uh, but the the person was in charge. So again, the victim was beat up in the home by the suspect striking with fists and an unknown object the victim went unconscious the suspect was arrested and charged the suspect was not charged with murder that sentence is still pending maplewick lane the victim lured outside of the home and shot in the backyard the suspect was arrested and found guilty a sentence to 30 years in prison next slide please 2021 barrington lane victim was found outside shot after returning home from work, uh, two suspects were arrested and found guilty. Sentencing is still pending for that. The MLK Drive victim was shot while sitting in a car at the gas pumps. Two suspects were arrested and found guilty. Sentencing is still pending. Uh, 20, next slide, please. 2021 or 2022, the one was at the JFK Center parking lot. 
The victim was shot after leaving the suspect's uh, vehicle. Two suspects were arrested and charged. One pled guilty and sentenced to 17 years, and the other one, uh, due to another uh, unrelated incident, um, is unfortunately deceased. Uh, next slide, which was 2023, we had uh, zero, zero homicides. Next slide, please. So motor vehicle thefts. Willingboro, we had 60 motor vehicles stolen in 2023 compared to only 28 in 2022. That was a 46% increase. This unfortunately was due to a social media challenge um, that went all over TikTok. It was all over um, Instagram and it called it the Kia boys where um, there were some defects in Kias and Hondas, which made these vehicles very easily to steal. Um, we came up with an initiative uh, where we gave out free club style um, uh, uh, steering wheel locks for uh, any resident or any anyone that worked in Willingboro that had those certain models of cars. Um, but un unfortunately, you know, there was there was an uptick in the entire country, not only in Willingboro, um, but, you know, throughout the entire country. And I, I gave you guys the numbers to look at. You know, you can see the state of New Jersey. Uh, there was approximately 16,642 vehicles uh, stolen statewide, which was a 5% increase from the previous year. Next slide. So this is the UCR or the Uniform Crime Report. So it's broken down into violent crimes and nonviolent crimes. So the first four, what they would consider uh, violent crimes, and the bottom three are your nonviolent crimes. And they're classified a certain way, and then each one would get designated with a number. So up here is we have our four or a five-year uh, five uh, breakdown. And each year we had, you know, we had a, a significant uh, decrease. You know, 2020, again, is that COVID year where, you know, it was a, a, an extreme decrease. But if you look at uh, 2023's column and you go to auto theft, you know, if you look at that, you know, that specific line from 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, you know, we've averaged probably about 30-ish motor vehicle thefts. You know, if we didn't have, if we didn't have that uptick this year, you know, our, our, our total number at the bottom, which is 483, would probably be somewhere around the, you know, the four, you know, the 450-ish, which would have been a decrease from the previous year, which was, was 477. Um, but that total number, if you go and you look at other communities, it's, it's very comparable, if not better, than some of the other communities, such as the Morristowns, the Medfords, the East Shams, the Delrans, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. So firearms purchasing, that's something that has uh, has increased over the, the last few years, and so has the uh, concealed carry permits. So what I did is, you know, our detective division does an outstanding job, you know, vetting all of the applications that we that we receive. And you can see, you know, in, in 2023 alone, that we received 602 applications for permits to purchase, or firearms ID cards. Uh, the previous year, again, this, you know, 2023 is in is in the gold. Uh, we approved um, 384. We denied 12 applications. We had zero that were appealed. Uh, withdrawn with 151 applications were were withdrawn, and they can be withdrawn for a certain reason. Whether they didn't they didn't complete the uh, the proper paperwork, or there was something that they had from years ago and their, their their background that they weren't aware of. And then they voluntarily, you know, asked to be withdrawn, try to take care of some of those things that, uh, that they were, you know, 20, 30 years old, and then they would, you know, go ahead and reapply. Uh, the, the column on the right is concealed carry. We really didn't have any in 2022 because of the way that the laws were written. And since they've changed since then, you can see that we had uh, uh, 78 residents requested concealed carry permits and we approved 78 of them. We had zero that were denied, um, zero withdrawn, zero pending. Next slide, please. Now what I'll do is, is I'll talk about use of force. So the column on the left is considered, there's, there's two ways that uh, we report use of force in our, in our portal. Anytime an officer uses force, it must be documented and it must be uh, reviewed. 
So this, this kind of talks about the different types and different levels of force. The column on the left is considered, you know, constructive authority and physical contact. Constructive authority is just that, an officer in their uniform, um, using verbal commands, things of that nature. Physical contact is, is what, you know, would be considered routine, um, guiding somebody into a police car, putting them in handcuffs, things like that. And that's, you know, so that's constructive authority and physical contact. That does not require a use of force report. Everything to the right does. So physical force, mechanical force, enhanced mechanical force, and deadly and deadly force, they require a use of force to be reported in our portal. So, you know, the definitions of, you know, physical force, you know, taking someone to the ground, um, mechanical force would be, you know, OC spray, it would be uh, the canine, or it would be um, uh, some type of uh, your baton. Enhanced mechanical, which is your, your CED or taser, um, and any type of less lethal, less lethal ammunition, you know, a beanbag round or something of, of that nature. And deadly force, uh, firearms, choking somebody or taking uh, your baton and striking somebody in the neck or head area is considered deadly force. Next slide, please. So what I did is I broke down our use of force. So like I mentioned earlier, we had 33,932 calls for service. Out of those calls for service, we had 51 situations where we had to use force. Now in those 51 situations, we had, uh, we had to create 109 use of force reports. So what that, to explain that is you could have one situation, but maybe two or three officers had to use force each officer that uses force must complete that use of force. So that's where you'll see that 51 situations and then 109 reports. So any officer that uses force must do a, uh, a use of force report. So when you kind of take those numbers, you know, the 51 and you divide about a 30, 33,000, you know, you, you, you basically get that force is used when we respond to a call 0.15% of the time. So what I kind of give you guys a little bit of a, a little bit of a further breakdown is most of the times when we go to some type of call, it, there's more than one person there, you know, whether it could be, you know, two, three or whatever. So I just used, you know, hey, listen, you know, every call that we had, there's let's say there's two people there. So that kind of even increases the percentage that we would have to use force and add, put it at a 0.07% chance that we would have to use force. Compared to last year, it was a 5.5% decrease from last year. We had the same situations, but less officers. So we had we still had 51 situations, but I think last year we had 124 reports, where this year we had 109 reports. Uh, breaking that down a little bit, um, so the out of the 109 reports that were created, 54 of those 109 were for a potential mental health issue. 26 was for we were dispatched for a or we were there for a some type of domestic violence situation and then 16 would be some type of welfare check so not all force is an example would be and this is the kind of the best way to explain it is so if someone is is a diabetic and their blood sugar starts to to drop to a certain point sometimes they can become a little bit of com combative so if we have to use some type of force for the, the medics or the, um, you know, the, uh, the EMTs to deliver them some type of insulin or something like that, a use of force would be generated for that. Even though it's not, you know, sometimes you think um, use of force, police use of force, it's, you know, um, it could be one thing, but there are, there's a whole bunch of different situations that we just document it. And that's, and that's what it is, you know, because force, that's not just putting somebody in the back of your police car, you know, we actually had to hold somebody down to be able to administer some type of, of medication. Next slide, please. So I broke these numbers down for arrests. So in 2023, we had 477 or 474 arrests. Out of 474 arrests, force was only used 24 times. So in 2023, 
if you were arrested for whatever reason, there was only a 5.0% chance that force was going to be used during that arrest. Next slide. So what type of force is being used? What type of force is are, are, are our officers using when they need to use force? 82% of the force used by our officers are their arms, hands, or there's some type of takedown. 18% was either an arm bar, a pressure point, or a leg kick. We had one incident where we had to discharge our duty weapon, and that was for a dog. A dog was attacking one of our officers or attempting to attack one of our officers. And uh, we had one incident where we had to discharge our taser on a dog also. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So what happens after force? It has to be reviewed. So there's three levels. Three levels of review. So you have your uh, your frontline supervisor, which is your sergeant, your watch commander, which is your lieutenant, and then it goes to your internal affairs lieutenant. And if there's any deficiencies that are noticed, uh, officers are held accountable and disciplined accordingly. And this discipline can range from counseling notices, training, written reprimands, suspensions, or termination. Next slide. Yes. Good. Yes, sir. <laughs> next slide, next slide. We're almost done anyway. This just goes over our internal affairs stuff. Next slide. Next one. These are the good ones. So these are our new hires for 2023. <laughs> so you guys kind of met them do, uh, throughout the year. Uh, next slide. And these are our promotions for 2023. Uh, next slide. <laughs> Community engagements, next slide. <laughs> and these are our future projects, Arrive Together, Shot Spotter, Active Shooter Training, and Police Licensing. Real quick, the, the uh, Arrive Together program, um, it's w us working together with mental health clinicians to kind of uh, alleviate you know, those types of use of forces where you know we're going to these calls where you saw what, 54, 54 of those reports were, be were because of a potential, a potential mental health um, mm -hmm. situation. So this would uh, pair us up with a before you don't leave yet. <laughs> now, this is this was an excellent, excellent presentation. I think this would be great for the community. I think mm -hmm. this was well done. Um, and thank you for presenting it relative to other towns, too. Mm -hmm. um, I think this was great news and we see, you know, some good progress going. Um, I just do have one question concern. I know we have a high um, population in foster care and um, I want to, I could say DIFUS, but I, yes. I um, how's the relationship over there? Are we working on the relationship uh, with the group homes yeah. and stuff yes. like that? Okay. And that's kind of, and, and that's part of the, the arrival program also, because, okay. you know, it's, some, you know, we'll say some of our calls are to the group homes, group homes. for some type of behavioral issues. Um, and then, you know, there are some procedures that we have um, where uh, skip it, which is, you know, they'll, they will do an outreach mm -hmm. to where, you know, uh, they would respond to the home as opposed to us having to take, you know, someone that's having some type of crisis, taking them somewhere else. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Are any comments and questions for Captain Bucks. I just want to say thank you for an excellent presentation. Mm -hmm. Very Great. well done. Um, you articulated the numbers. I mean, very detailed. Great job. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> um, Mr. Harris, um, we want to bring uh, Pannoni back up. We have some more, a couple more questions. Yeah. And then we just wanted to discuss briefly the turf field. Okay. And while he was coming up, I just want to let you know that uh, Captain Bucks and I will be conducting interviews next week for the vacancy in our Office of Emergency Management. Okay. We do have three 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 candidates. Okay. Um, the council have any further questions? I know we had some further questions or um, comments concerning the theater. Uh, one of the questions came uh, as far as the construction portion. Would it be possible to do construction portion and ordered equipment at a later date prior to the seats going in? Um, well, I mean, that would be the nature of this change order. So that we would we would do the work um, 
we, we would do the change order and then put those speakers in before the seats go in. I mean, that would be the goal. So that's the structural part of it? That, yeah, the structural part, correct. The structural part has to do with the speakers themselves. Okay. It cannot be supported with the existing roof and structure that's oh. in the theater. Okay, that's the clarification I need. Well, Deputy Mayor, I thought your question yeah. was, could they like fortify the structure? Could they do the structural part, order the equipment, put the chairs in, and then at some other point come back and put the speakers up? I thought you were saying. No, because earlier he indicated that it would be more of a cost. So someone sent me a message asking if they could do the structural portion first, mm -hmm. but not realizing that the speakers on the equipment is part of the structural. Okay. Okay. So well, I, I thought he was I, saying, I thought it was they were yeah, I thought it was like two separate things like right? put the support things. beams and put the structure the infrastructure in and then the speakers have to go up on that structure that you've created. Is that Right, but the, yeah, so the the uh, the seats would still have to be protected or removed to put the speakers up because you need a, a uh, lift or something like that to, to put the speakers. So you wouldn't be able to access the space to put Correct. the speakers because the chairs up. are in the way, the seats are in the way. And what cost would be that to make those adjustments? To pull the seats out, put them back in. Yeah, I would have to look at that. Right now, just once again, just for the numbers, because depending on where it's at, it's not all the seats coming out. It would be sections, I'm assuming. Correct, correct. So the sections of, that you would need to uh, do the work. So once again, just if we can get some numbers just to see what that looks like. <clears throat> we explore our options. I, I, I had not done that, so I can do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, one other question, and is the cost of the change order, is that just due to the equipment change or is that due to the roof and support beams or things like that, other pieces that need to go in? Yeah, so the cost of the change order, it's the complete cost with the speakers, but the speakers then dictate the structural improvements. So without the speakers, we don't need those structural improvements, and that's how we proceeded with the current design. We don't need structural improvements in the in the theater if we use the current the specified speakers but once we go to these new speakers they're heavier they, ha they have a, a a heavier load so therefore you need to reinforce the ceiling and the structure okay and that's adding an additional cost in addition to the, the equipment itself correct that's okay right. thank you you're welcome one more question mayor so in regards to the different speakers when we ask for the assessment from you guys how come you came in with an inferior product opposed to what's recommended based on us wanting a state-of-the-art theater where's the disconnect there right well so so the uh, the speakers were what was appropriate for that space we had looked at the um, the various uh, types of speakers although we didn't we didn't get bobby duckett's input until earlier this year so that was that was not no, part of the consideration I understand but without his input based on the specs that we requested how come you guys didn't provide us with the quality you know we we asked for instead it appears we got this and then when we brought someone in they informed us they said well what you have here is not what you're asking for because that's the way we were presenting it to you know to this gentleman who was in the business and to others as far as getting performances here and it was stated based on what we have we would be spending so much more money bringing renting equipment and so forth and that's, you know, so I just want to know where that disconnect came from. Right. So so under the value engineering aspect of this, which is looking at costs of everything, we looked at costs. We looked at cost of the chairs. We looked at cost of the curtains. We looked at cost of, um, uh, you know, carpeting, everything. And so under value engineering, we looked at that for that space for 500 seats, the speakers were adequate for that space. So they, they were of, of a quality that you could then uh, supplement those with additional speakers on a rental basis as needed. Okay, so what you're telling me is you looked at it based on space. We're looking at it based on performances and quality that we're bringing in. Right. I, I understand, but the speaker, though, that type of speaker, again, it's the cost of that. Understand, that, but why wasn't it presented to us so that we can make that decision early on? So what you did was you took what you believe we wanted to fit it into a box of course, opposed to saying to us, well, for this, for this here, just like with the turf field, there's different levels of tracks. You gave us the option to pick what we want based on certifications. But I think it would have been most appropriate for Pannoni to say to us, well, for what you want, the quality you want, we're here. And get, had given us, provide us with the different levels for us to decide. But instead, what you did was based on the space and the seating, you guys gave us a product that was inferior to what we were asking for. 
So until we got the consultant in who made us aware of that, which I, I'm thankful he did, because, you know, we would have been really upset having this put in and we're not able to accomplish, you know, the goals that we set out. So as Dr. Worthy said, there is some ownership on Pannoni. Okay, whether it's communication, whatever it is, but you're not going to walk away without taking some ownership at all. And that's and that's just in all fairness. Okay, so as Dr. Worthy said, it's not so much the township didn't give direction. Or did, we gave direction. What happened is you based your specs on what you guys believe based on based on space and seats, not quality of what we were asking for. So that's I just want to make that clear that that's the disconnect. And all I'm looking for is you guys to say, you know what, I we we did make a mistake. That's all. We just want ownership here. I mean, we're going to work through it one way or the other. But you have to take some ownership. You have to. Right. I mean, I mean, I would say that there's a differing a professional opinion on the the speakers that we have spec, and we did provide a complete set of specifications prior to going out to bid. So that was reviewable. But but Bobby Duckett did not look at those. Uh, apparently until uh, January. But I'm, I'm not going to go back we'll and forth, that. but, yeah. you know. I understand. I, I understand. And thank I, you. I will take it back and, and uh, I appreciate your input. Uh, Madam Mayor, I did have um, some questions concerning the, the turf field. Turf field. If, okay. Let's switch, let's switch over to the turf field conversation. Sure. Yes. Thank um, you. So uh, today I know council is going to be considering the different options for um, the turf field in terms of um, the level or the type of field, um, if we're going to have field activities or if it's really going to be just focused on having a state of the art track mm -hmm. and then having a turf field primarily for football or soccer field, hockey, what have you, and not like javelin pits and things like that. We can talk through all of that. Um, but I guess I did see the different, I know we're not talking pricing right now, but I did see um, a report that showed a significant um increase in price that included uh, the parking lot and some other configurations. My question is, when we started the conversation at about $2.4 million, mm -hmm. um, are we still at a turf field and um, a turf field and track for around that same pricing and the additional pricing is for the parking lot? I just want to be clear in terms of the cost allocation or the, you know, the cost allocation for the turf field and track. Right. So the way we broke out our cost estimate, we provided the track and turf just uh, as a separate item, you know, for for tracking the numbers. But there is, uh, with no parking at all, there's still a significant amount of cost associated with storm drainage, for instance, because mm -hmm. the field would it be it's treated as an impervious surface. So we have to accommodate that. There's also wetlands that are on the property. So there's a permitting aspect to that that would have to occur um, as we designed the, the turf field. So just that one number of 2.6 million uh, for the for the turf and the track does not then include some of the infrastructure that's required, storm drainage and, and also the parking as well. But so there is a there is a another component and that's up in that the upper part, the 2.7 million is it, now that does include parking, as, as you had mentioned, but it also includes the infrastructure that's necessary, which would be storm drainage and, and uh, of stormwater control. Okay. Um, and then the follow-on question is, when the presentation was made several months ago with the um, turf and track people who came, um, they stood by this 90-day. It takes 90 days, and it's all it's all done. We'll come in, and you're going to have everything done. Um, what does the, Is that still a 90-day process, or what does the timeline look like if the council comes back and says, yes, we're ready to go? Is that a 90 day process or what does that timeline look like? So, so no, yeah, the, the 90 day process was, was that vendor through the co-op program, mm -hmm. but we would have to get a full design together and permitting. So that process is, I mean, realistically, we've done something similar in Mount Laurel and it's about a year process from when we get the go to have a design ready to have the vendor come in and and do that 90 days. I appreciate you um, sharing that with the council on the record because from the beginning of the conversations, I've been asking for a timeline and how long does this thing take? And the only thing we got was the 90 days. We've never, this is the first time that we're hearing that it's a year long part. We already waited a year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're the, this is the first time. So a year from now, so spring of 2025 
is what you're, if we were to say, let's go. Spring of 2025 is when we'd have our athletic facility. Yes. Okay. It's the first time that the council has been ma made aware of that timeline. Right. And I was dealing with budgets right. and things like that, but the a, a schedule, because we didn't know where council was as far as the budget. So, so I was developing these numbers. Mr. Doherty, the, the council's budget has nothing to do with the, the project timeline itself. When we kept asking for high level timeline, whenever I'm working on a project, I ask consistently with any of our professionals, what is the timeline? I need to know how much it costs, but we need to know the timeline because there are a lot of other different factors um, in the community that we're considering. So tonight is the first time we've gotten a straight answer on that, and we're learning that it's a year. We thought we were we were much further along than that. Yeah, within this year. So again, whatever's happening with the communication, there's a significant disconnect between what's happening at Pannoni and the efforts being made and what's being communicated back to the body. Yeah, I understand, and I apologize for that. Again, the, the vendor... His his um, process is 90 days, but there is... Right, so Pannoni should have come up and said, that's his process, we've got this engineering to do, this is our timeline, this is what we would need, his part would be 90 days, our part is six months or whatever, and then provide an overall response to the council. Our our goal with working with Pannoni is having like that single point of contact that's giving us that information that's already been synthesized. We don't want to project manage the, the, the work and have to figure out a little piece from Pannoni, a piece from a vendor, a piece from USATF. A piece, that's, that's not what we want to do. The goal was to have a turnkey operation working with Pannoni, which is why this body, you know, selected Pannoni yet again to be our, our township engineer. So it's just, it's a little disappointing that we continue to have um, these points of disconnect, and I'm hopeful that we're able to rectify that. Yes, thank you. Doctor. Thank you. So we'll, we'll discuss an executive session further. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I'm sorry, Council. Okay. And um, Mr. Harris, you can um, before you go into um, the resolution the ordinance, I just want to I'm going to uh, let Carmax come up and do their presentation. Um, you know, the governing body is uh, continues to seek economic growth um, for this community. So um, CarMax is here to present their intentions for a possible intentions for the Route 130 Marketplace property. Um, so, uh, you know, where the council is looking to create job opportunities, boost local businesses and strengthen our overall economy. So um, we just want to have this presentation where I'm going to allow for a um, a brief public comment concerning this um, presentation. So we do welcome the input of our residents. Um, we are we are always looking for input as council works to grow our economy here in Willenboro. So thank you, Carmack. Thank you, Mayor, and, and, and members of uh, council for the opportunity to present uh, uh, this evening about the proposed development for Carmax. My name is Michael Floyd. I'm an attorney with Archer and Griner, and I'm here with Paul Toms on behalf of uh, Carmax. We are passing out right. Sean, if you can hear me, check your email. I just sent you an attachment that they're going to need for their presentation. All right. Give me a few minutes. Um, just, just to state up front, CarMax is not on the property. Okay. I'm sorry. And they are in uh, discussions to potentially purchase the property. It's commonly known as the grand marketplace. Uh, as everyone knows, it's located along uh, Route 130 North and in the rear from Sunset uh, Boulevard. And I think what would be helpful this evening is for Paul to walk through uh, the presentation that we've passed out uh, to talk about CarMax, CarMax's history with uh, uh, dealerships, uh, both with the retail end and the wholesale end, and then talk about the property in question and how it will be utilized. So I'd like to turn it over to Paul. Paul, maybe just for the mayor and members of council, can you just explain who you are with CarMax? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Paul Toms. I'm a senior analyst on the real estate team here at CarMax. Basically, what I do is uh, I work on the transaction side, finding new properties for CarMax to build new facilities on. And um, Willingboro has emerged as a contender for one of those facilities. And I'm here to talk to you about it. And thank you so much for your time tonight. And maybe just with your presentation, I know it's going to be coming up in a few minutes, sure. but I know the time is precious this evening. I know sure. we have about 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and start on the about the company slide. That's going to be uh, the next page here. If you guys have these handouts. 
So we are the la largest retailer of used cars in the United States. We started the company because we truly saw an opportunity in the marketplace to completely revolutionize the used car buying experience by focusing on providing iconic customer experiences for every transaction. Perfect, there we go. That core competency of providing that iconic experience to our consumers really resonated with our customers. And since we first began in 1993, we've been able to grow to over 240 stores in 41 states. We have over 30,000 associates nationwide. And in the last fiscal year, we sold just under 1.4 million vehicles. Next slide, please. CarMax is also known in the industry as one of the best places to work and across the United States as one of the best places to work. We have very competitive pay and benefits. Where we really shine is through internal training and promotions. It's an incredibly common story in the CarMax world for an associate to start on the sales floor of a facility, work their way up to be manager of that facility, and even possibly beyond that. When you're part of the team, we truly do everything in our power to make sure that you are comfortable and happy on our team. And we have quite a few accolades that represent this. Um, we've been on Training Magazine's Top 125 for 16 consecutive years. We've been on Fortune's 100 Best Companies to Work For for 20 consecutive years. In 2024, we placed 68th on the list nationwide. And we've also been featured in Newsweek's America's Greatest Workplaces for Diversity for 2023 and 2024. Next slide, please. So we also have an awesome organization tied to us called CarMax Cares that basically provides ways for our associates to make impacts in local communities by matching dollars and hours spent. So we have fantastic partnerships with quite a few organizations across the country, one of them being Kaboom. This is a great example. So we actually build playgrounds with Kaboom in certain areas in the United States, and we've done over 200 playgrounds since we started with our partnership with them. Um, it's also incredibly common for our store and capacity facilities to donate their time to local causes that they feel um, good about. So at least once a quarter, this is very common. I was just talking to an LGM of a store in Kennesaw, Georgia, and she was saying that they've recently spent time with a no-kill animal shelter. They've worked with a domestic violence shelter. They've worked with local food banks. They've even done adopt a family type events at Christmas. It's a very common thing for our associates to truly care about our community and become an actual partner in our community. And that's exactly what you would see with a CarMax facility in Willingboro. Next slide, please. <clears throat> And just to give you a scope of where we are financially as a company, um, in the fiscal year ending in 2023, we did open 10 new retail store locations. We sold just under 1.4 million vehicles through our combined retail and wholesale channels. We bought just over 1.2 million vehicles from consumers and dealers. We had net revenues of right around 30 billion, gross profit right around 3 billion, and net earnings a little under 500 million. Next slide, please. So everyone knows that CarMax buys and sells cars, but what is not commonly known is that we're a big player in the wholesale vehicle sales inventory. So when we buy a car, we're going to put it in one of two different types of inventory. If it's a car that is looking like it's going to meet our retail standards for sale, these are, might be newer, less miles on them. Those cars are going to be reconditioned through a separate process and then will be listed for sale at our retail locations. If the car doesn't meet our standards for immediate retail sale, we're going to sell it wholesale to our network of third-party independent dealerships. So historically, we've sold our wholesale vehicles at our retail dealerships, and we realized that we were actually holding back inventory in these retail sites. Um, so we decided to purchase additional land strictly for these types of facilities. So that is exactly what this facility would be. It would be a facility to sell our wholesale cars to licensed and pre-qualified dealer customers. Next slide, please. So talking a little bit about how this facility would actually function. So wholesales inventory would come in throughout the week on car carriers and be sold at midweek wholesale sales events. 
um, inventory will be unloaded, placed into our staging lot, and then our pre-qualified dealer customers that are included on an invitation only basis are allowed to come check out the cars in the 48 hours before we hold our wholesale sales events, see what they want to bid on, see what they're interested in. Then we hold our midweek sales events, which are usually only once a week, sometimes twice, depending on volume, um, on a date from usually Tuesday to Thursday, depending on the location, where our wholesale inventory is sold to our dealer customers. Right now, most of our events are being held virtually, um, kind of as a result of COVID, but we would need the ability to hold in-person uh, wholesale sales events as well, if the demand for the in-person services shows up again. So on a high level, vehicles are coming in, they're being sold at our sales facility, and then they're being removed from the lot by the dealers themselves. We wouldn't be distributing those cars. The dealers would be taking them away. And it is also important to note that these events are highly professional. We use the services of a professional auctioneer. It's an extremely clean, sleek, modern operation. It's not what you would think of when you think of a general wholesale sales event. You can move on to the next slide. So as far as our vision for the property, we have identified a property. Uh, it's about 29 acres. We would plan on building approximately 12,000 square feet of improvements on site. Total development cost is currently spec'd at around 10 to 15 million just for the improvements on site. This does not include what we would pay for the purchase of the land. And then we would be hiring approximately 26 associates, seven of which would be managers making from 110 to 137,000 a year. The other 29 would be clerical staff making 27 and a half on the low end part-time scale to 60,000 and a half on the high end full-time scale. So along with our capital investment, we'll be bringing in 36 new associates, uh, at market rates with the backing of a company that is consistently ranked in the Fortune 100 best companies to work for in the United States. Next slide. So this is our concept plan. It's a little tough to see on the screen, but I'll try to walk through it um, so everyone can kind of understand what's going on. So at the moment, we don't have any use for that back portion that's closest to the bottom road. So we are kind of planning on leaving that as is, we would be demolishing the existing structure. Um, as it is currently spec'd, we have our customer and employee parking and truck loading and unloading right by the road. So trucks would only be able to access that front portion and there would be a clear separation between our activity and the residential areas. We don't plan on disturbing any of the wooded areas. We're thinking those could be great natural buffers to the other developments around. Uh, we've actually enhanced the green space on this plan on the northeastern portion as well. Uh, we're not proposing to change any of the access points along Burlington Pike, and we've mirrored the landscaping of adjacent developments to fit into the neighborhood. We're uncertain, but we suspect that the senior living facility has access rights through the existing entrances. So we're trying to maintain those. Um, but as it stands, the, that would be the customer and employee lot at the front on Burlington Pike. And then that would be our staging area right below it where you see the rendering of those cars with our wholesale sales building right there. Um, and that is where we would stage the cars that are going to be sold at our wholesale sales events or are waiting for our dealer customers to pick them up after our wholesale sales events. Any questions on that concept plan? Mayor, one thing I should mention too at the beginning is that the use itself is not specifically permitted in the zoning district or under the redevelopment plan yeah. that governs the use of the property. So if there's an interest on the part of the township to uh, accommodate this use, we realize that this plan would have to go through probably various iterations. Yes. And we would also work with council to uh, amend the redevelopment uh, plan to allow for the proposed use. But but CarMax is here wanting to be fully transparent. They mm -hmm. want to work with the township. And if the, the feedback is, uh, you know, an interest in um, 
this use, mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to work collaborative, collaboratively with the township and its professionals. Okay, no, we appreciate that. And just for clarity, um, again, this is just a presentation um, for our residents, for their input, there will be no decision made today um, as council deliberates on it, but we do want the input and the ideas from our residents. So um, I will open it up for public comment briefly. Absolutely. And if you wouldn't mind, you stay right here. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, thank you. So um, public comment is now open for the, and this is strictly for the presentation for um, CarMax. Public comment is now open. Please state, state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is Andy Oliveira, 33 Express Lane. Um, so when we're talking about jobs for the, uh, for the proposal here, there's really no guarantee that I think any of those would go to Willing Grove residents, if I'm not mistaken, right? And it's really not a, a net positive in terms of the sheer number of jobs. Um, you know, and then when we're talking about community impact, I mean, it's admirable, I get it. Um, but, you know, other than the re revenue that's generated for CarMax, I don't see the benefit for the township, right? Um, as opposed to something like a Wawa or Royal Farms or Sheets or some other kind of retail or restaurant type of business. Um, the truck loading and unloading, I don't think that's ideal for the elementary school, along with the uh, senior home, um, especially as it relates to the uh, pollution that's generated by the tractor trailers that are going to come and go. I mean, essentially, to me, it seems like it's going to be a dumping ground for a clearinghouse. I don't know how that benefits us as a township. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, Marcus King, 135 Torrington Lane. Um, in looking at um, the picture of the layout of CarMax, um, I agree with the gentleman who just came before us that um, there's a lot of traffic already on 130. This is just going to create more traffic, I believe, uh, in terms of um, the warehouses that we already have in the area, um, because this is going to be an, a car auction. So that means cars are going to be coming and going all the time. There's no really stability here. And the biggest concern is you're talking about 24 or jobs. That's a beautiful piece of property. Um, I think market correctly, we can do more for um, our city. So I, I would hope that this is discussion, but I don't think this is the way to go moving forward. Thank you. Gary Johnson, 54 Gramercy Lane. Um, I have similar uh, sentiments to what is being said. It, it looks to me that from the standpoint of Willingboro, this is looking more like a warehouse. Um, it's good to hear that the uh, semi-tractor, the car trailers that bring in the cars are going above Route 130, and although Route 130 needs no more traffic. Uh, the other thing that hasn't been discussed here is if you're going to have these cars on that lot expressed, I assume there's going to be some kind of security arrangements made to protect those cars, and that hasn't been discussed, what it would be and how it would be constructed. So I would be curious to know what those would be, and, and I agree, having jobs is great, but there's no guarantee that any of those are going to come from Willingboro. So I remain just a little bit skeptical. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, can we have um, to allow anyone online? Uh, yes, Sharon Anderson. Uh, good evening. Thank you for the presentation. This is Sharon Anderson. I live at 7 Bellhurst Lane. Uh, the ratio of 36 associates to 29 acres is 1.24 jobs per acre. And I find that to be very, very, very low for some for uh, such a central parcel in our um, town. That would be appropriate to an industrial area, to a warehouse area, but not to a heavily trafficked retail or residential area. I want to see the elevation from Burlington Pike because if they have enough parking for a once a week auction, that means six days a week, there's an empty parking lot that we'd be looking at, and behind that pump parking lot would be used cars. It seems like it is indeed a warehouse for used cars. 
Um, I would want to know what commitments could be made for the unrestricted for the land not used. I want to see restrictions on that land because the next thing we know, we're going to get somebody coming in and wanting a low job use of that uh, location. Um, I did take a quick look at a map of other auto auction locations in our area. And looking at this map, they tend to be in low traffic industrial areas. And that is not what we need for uh, what effectively is our front, our, uh, our front lawn. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Okay, Shirley Dilworth. Good evening, council and residents. Um, my only comment about CARMAX is that we will have an, another opportunity, you know, to, to review this process. It was, you know, this is a quick sale tonight, a quick presentation, and um, I'd like to have more time to think about it and maybe come back and discuss it at a later date. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Martin Knock. Good evening. Um, to say I was a little surprised about the presentation would be an understatement because I personally uh, feel that um, this is probably a worse proposal than the other ones that we had before for trucks uh, coming in and out of there. Uh, just having hundreds of cars sitting there waiting to be auctioned off and everything. I don't believe that's what we want on one of the main uh, properties that we have fronting our community. Normally, auctions are really off to the side and so forth. Now, there's a main um, CarMax facility in Del Lanco, and I'm sure there's lots of land that's available that they could do an auction. This is not even a showcase, not even a showroom. This is not a place you would go and buy to the regular public. And we're going to have cars in and out, trucks in and out. And, you know, I have been complaining about the increased traffic on Beverly Bay and Cocos uh, from, uh, uh, well, I don't know, it's not, it's not CarMax, but it's certainly Carvana. And uh, I don't see how this helps this community at all, um, especially uh, when their own previous owners turned down the uh, movie studio. I mean, that would have been much more of something that would be, would be a perk for the community. And now you're talking about a, a car facility. There's just hundreds of cars moving in and out, trucks coming in and out. Uh, obviously, these are cars that uh, CarMax doesn't want. So I, I'm like, wow, this is, this is flabbergasting. Thank you for my allowing me to make my statement. Thank you, Mr. Knopf. Is there anyone else online? Okay. Public comment for this presentation is now closed. Um, and I just want to first address Ms. Dilworth that there's no, we are not making any decisions. So there is time for you to, um, to uh, think about it and share your input. Appreciate, um, so and I appreciate, appreciate all the residents that did come up or um, check in online to give their input. Thank you. And I'll let, allow you to. No, thank you. We CarMax is very well aware of the concerns about traffic on Route yep. 130, uh, the adjoining residential uses. And it, again, if there's a willingness on the part of the township to look at this use, that's the benefit of uh, pursuing an amendment to the redevelopment plan and having CarMax enter into a redevelopment agreement. Because in that plan process with the amendments, you are able to bake into the plan certain restrictions on the use, uh, the width of buffers, uh, restricting the rear of the property. These were all good comments that were raised by members of the public. And there is a way where the township working with the solicitor can um, incorporate some of those concerns and how to mitigate those concerns during the redevelopment plan process. Um, but again, CarMax is uh, a well-known company. It certainly has the financial wherewithal to undertake this process, uh, but it wants to be fully transparent. And that's why it's here. 
uh, before uh, the council this evening. They did not simply want to submit an application for use variance approval and site plan approval. They want to work collaboratively, collaboratively with the township or any other municipality. The, the only other comment I would address is in terms of the workforce and, and hiring locally, uh, CarMax would certainly, uh, in terms of hiring, be willing to host job fairs here or elsewhere in the township and uh, give every resident the opportunity to apply for those jobs. They certainly can't say who's going to be hired or where they're going to be hired, but it benefits CarMax to have its employees local uh, to the area. Only other comment, I think maybe to address member of the public was concerning on-site security. Paul, if you can speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. So we would have, this would all be walled off. Um, we do have certain WIP wall or work in progress is what we call them wall standards. Um, so the entire staging area would be behind a wall, which is where all of our cars would be held. And there would be a guard shack as well. That's a very, um, it's a very well established perimeter wall there. So that's what I would say for the uh, security standards there. Mayor, I have a question. Go ahead. So, you know, we met before we had conversations, but one thing that wasn't mentioned by the residents was the infrastructure. So you're going to have trucks coming from 295 through Willingboro, and that's an infrastructure concern. Then you have the back road to Sunset, which there's no way you can say a driver won't be coming down there. You have a school, you have the senior home. So I think that's going to be a big issue in addition to the traffic, you know, additional traffic on 130. But right now, as we're trying to uh, rehabilitate our infrastructure, you know, I don't think that's going to help us in any way, having all of this traffic coming in and out. You did indicate trucks will be loading, unloading between certain hours, but you also stated that it may be one or two after hours, which means for us, if the door is open to come in after hours, that's what normally happens. So the time frames, um, once again, we met before, this is no surprise. I just don't think personally, not speaking as the council, that this would be conducive or ideal for this community. You know, I did mention to you that we were looking for something to be more of a destination. Mm -hmm. And as you heard from some of the comments, you know, we've had other opportunities to entertain other projects that I guess would have been more pleasing, but those were turned down. So I just think, you know, I, Right. I appreciate you coming before us, but based on what the community says, you know, I'm just weighing in on, you know, what I feel. No, and, and we should have Absolutely. stated up front. One thing is, we, you know, I'm here on behalf of CarMax. We don't represent the property owner, so I can't speak to any prior uh, proposals that came before for council. And um, in terms of Sunset uh, Avenue, Avenue uh, Road, Road uh, behind the property, um, you know, if we move forward, um, CarMax would be willing to, again, work with uh, the, the township engineer on changes to those access points on Sunset Road so that tractor trailers can't use it, whether that's uh, narrowing the throat of the driveway coming in, whether it's pork chops, whether it's other right in, right out, so it's for cars only. The anticipation and the goal is for all trucks to enter from, from Route 130. And again, that was in response to your concern. I understand that, but when you're a truck driver, you're coming to an area you're not familiar with, navigation sends you any which way. So even though you're narrowing the entrance, doesn't mean trucks won't come down that road until they see that. So it's still that transportation issue with the infrastructure and everything else with those heavy vehicles. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Anyone else have any concerns or questions? Okay, so thank you for coming. Again, we just wanted to present to the public. There was no, you know, uh, direction that council was going with this, um, but you, you know, you want to come before the public and, we, we and get an understanding. We truly to appreciate your time. And for anyone, if there's any questions about CarMax or about the proposal, if we could supplement our presentation this evening, we could send it through the township clerk, the solicitor, and they could share it with the members of the governing body. Okay, and you could you would hear from us I'm, again. I want to give the public a little bit more time mm -hmm. to um, digest and look at it. We have people look at YouTube later on, so um, I just want as much input. Understood. All Thank right. You. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your time. All right, Mr. Harris, um, you could proceed. And wow. yeah. <laughs>
and just do brief like one liners. Right. <laughs> Give you one liners. Yep, yep, yep. Uh so uh for for your consideration this evening is ordinance number uh 2024-5 which is an amendment to chapter 272 property maintenance. This ordinance is just to design to uh, provide some structure in the way that properties manage the uh the storage and handling of firewood and um uh, down trees that are on their property. Uh, resolution number 2024-108 is uh, authorizing the Township of Willingboro to apply for the Historic Site Management Grant. Uh, this will allow the Township to apply for the Historic Site Management Grant, grant through the historic, New Jersey Historic Trust for uh, the Futuro House. Um, we would be required to supply matching funds in the amount of 15000 which which is included in the 2024 capital budget, and the approval of this uh, application could potentially provide funding for the cost of our pres preservation plan and uh, possibly the cost of construction drawings for the Futura House. Resolution 2024-109 is just a resolution accepting a treadmill donation to support the boxing program uh, for recreational purposes, or actually two treadmills. Resolution 2024-110 is a resolution ratifying uh, the bill's list. Resolution 2024-111 is a resolution to amend the appropriation lines on resolution number 2023-179. Um, there were certain appropriations or certifications of funds that were approved in prior resolutions that needed to be um, adjusted once uh, certain grant funds had been received in relation to the Performing Arts Center. And that's what this resolution does. It just moves appropriations from one capital account to another capital account, but it does not change the, the amount of the funds that were previously appropriated or approved. Resolution number 2024-113 is a resolution of the council um, consenting to the vertical bridge subleasing to T-Mobile uh, Northeast LLC or one of its affiliates. That's a, a cell tower that is on our property behind uh, Country Club Pool that um, this company wishes to now sublease to T-Mobile and it would require your authorization to do so. Resolution number 2024-12 our 112 is the introduction of the municipal budget um, by title only. Um, this is just uh, this is just permitted if the budget has been posted online, if it has been provided um, to um, in the municipal building, the local public library and the county library, and all of those conditions have been met, which would enable us to read the budget by title only. Um, Resolution number 2024-114 is a resolution to make amendments to the 2024 budget. Um, when we first did our budget introduction, we did come to the council with a one penny reduction at our last meeting under the direction of Mayor McIntosh. Um, we were instructed to go back and review that budget again. We did do that and we were able to come back uh, with some adjustments to bring forth another penny decrease in the budget for a two cent decrease. So if the council is satisfied with that, then we can introduce that we can, well, we have to have our public hearing anyway tonight, but then if the council is satisfied with the two penny re reduction, we can go ahead and, and introduce the amendments. We can go ahead and have the public hearing at our, our meeting in on May the 7th. Okay. And then um, we can go ahead and adopt the budget at that time with the amendments, or if the council decides they want to make further amendments at that time, you would have the opportunity to do so before we go into the final. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, so just for clarification, we will be meeting in between um, for budget um, workshops. Okay. Just to you know go over it. I don't foresee many amendments, but I just want to make sure we go through it and see. Okay, and, and just while we're just touching on the budget, uh, Ms. Eusebio and I, we have been talking about prior capital accounts and monies that we are having available. We're going to be looking at that tomorrow uh, in relation to the emergency appropriation, but we will also look at that and see if we can shift things around to maybe 
alleviate the funding for the Performing Arts Center. So we'll discuss that as well. And finally, an, an item that is not on the agenda, um, but it is presented to you uh, authorizing the advertisement and receipt of requests for proposals for the theater management services at the Willingboro Township Performing Arts Center. Uh, if you authorize this, then we will go ahead and advertise to receive proposals for theater management services. Those uh, proposals would be open on Tuesday, May 14th, um, after 20 plus days being out on the street. And then you can decide, um, you know, if you choose to award the contract to, to whom uh, submits requests. And that is all that I have uh, for your consideration right. this evening. Thank you for that. Um, and so just for clarification, we you still, we still, are you still presenting um, 114? Okay, that's still in there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open it up for um, public comment for agenda items only. You have two minutes. Um, please state your name and address for the record. Public comment for agenda items only is now open. Anyone online? Uh, not at this moment, Mayor. Thank you. Public public comment for agenda items is now closed. You can proceed, Deputy Clerk, for the ordinance. So we have ordinance 2024-5, which was an ordinance to amend the code of the Township of Willingboro, specifically chapter 272, entitled property maintenance by adding a new article entitled outside storage and deliveries of firewood in residential areas. Public hearing is now open for ordinance 2024-5. Doesn't seem to be anyone. Okay. Is there, I'm sorry, public hearing is now closed for 2024-5. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Anderson, seconded by Dr. Worthy. Any discussion? Dr. Worthy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, I am so happy to see this one um, for us to, to consider for the ordinance and looking forward to hearing um, if the public has anything to say as we move forward in the process and future meetings, um, going around town, seeing the pictures, knowing the hazard mm -hmm. of having so much firewood stockpiled. Um, I appreciate um, code enforcement and, and inspections um, really being proactive and bringing something to the body that will be meaningful for our town. It may not seem like a big deal, but it is definitely a safety um, hazard. And um, when you see the totality of firewood that is stored and stockpiled throughout our community in different places, I think it shows that um, how necessary this ordinance is. So thank you to the administration for bringing this forward. Any other discussion? All right, roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? Yes. And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. All right. Does anyone have any, any further... Um, Discussion on any of these resolutions before I put a motion for a consent agenda? 113. I just want the value of the contract. Okay, I'll pull that out. All right. All right, I make a motion for a consent agenda of resolutions 2024 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 114, and 115. Mayor, if I may. Yes. Uh, resolution 114. And not be uh, done in the okay. Gotcha. I'll it has that to out. be done after okay. the, the hearing. All right. I'll repeat. Um, I make a consent. I make a motion for a consent agenda of resolutions twenty twenty four dash one hundred eight through one twelve and twenty twenty four dash one fifteen. Second. What? I have a question. Um, the resolution 112, does the budget have to be read into the record by title? No, because no, it was advertised. That's correct. Okay. So you're just uh, uh, authorizing the budget to re be read by title so we don't have to go through the whole. Yes. Okay. So it's moved by Mayor McIntosh, seconded by Dr. Worthy. 
Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson and Mayor McIntosh? Yes. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda for resolution 2024-108 through 112 and 2024-115. Second. Moved by Mayor McIntosh, seconded by Councilwoman Whitfield. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson yes. and Mayor McIntosh? Yes. All right. We have to do 113 and 114. Need a motion for 113. Is there a motion for resolution 2024-113? So moved. Second. Moved by Dr. Worthy, seconded by Councilwoman Whitfield. Roll call, I'm sorry, um, discussion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, I'm, I was curious if there was anything I could find on the um, value of the contract. I see that it's a up to a 15-year agreement. I didn't see what the benefit was back to Willingboro. I don't know if it's in my packet and you can point me to it or... So I do not know if the materials were included in the packet. They were sent along from um, Vertical Bridge, and I will forward them in case everyone does not have them. Um, it is an existing agreement that started with Liberty Tower back in 2012. So um, this would end in 2027, based on and uh, if the, the recital, I think, says August 22nd, 2012. So the end date would be... Um, August 22nd, 2027. The agreement has a subsection six in there that says that um, sublease has to be granted by the count or it should be granted by the council, cannot be unreasonably withheld. So Vertical Bridge took over CIG. They took over the rights of the contract. So they have the ability to request the material. They sent everything along for review. Um, the T-Mobile would have to do everything the exact same as um, Vertical Bridge has in place in the contract, per the language of the contract, um, which is uh, 1200 a month to the township. Right, so the, if, we're, the if we're looking at this again, I just wanted you know, to be able to consider or reevaluate if there's opportunities to make any adjustments in the benefit of, you know, for the benefit of town. At the, at this time, there is not an opportunity to readjust the agreement. The agreement will be in place until 2027. When it expires at that point in time, the township would have the ability to renegotiate. Thank you very much. That's and, all. And we also, we did also put that on the radar to make sure we don't miss that opportunity right. um, mm -hmm. to make sure we, you know, look at the full thing because we read it and I'm going to, you know, we're kind of stuck for this three year or two year period, mm -hmm. three year period. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? Yes. And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. So now, Mayor, we would need to go ahead and open the public hearing for the 2024 municipal budget. Public hearing is now open for 2024 municipal budget. Okay. Public hearing is now closed for the 2024 municipal budget. Is there a motion to introduce the, tw I'm sorry. The, the Which, public hearing is closed. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead with resolution number 2024-114, uh, introducing okay. the um, resolution to amend uh, the 2024 municipal budget. Okay. So resolution 2024-114 to amend the 2024 budget. There a motion. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Whitfield, seconded by Dr. Worthy. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield. Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? Yes. And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. 
And Mayor, if I can just make one just comment regarding the budget, and I really need residents to understand that the township is working very hard to control fiscal spending in Willingborough by reducing their budget by two pennies to the tax to the to the residents. Uh, there are other taxing agencies that affect your tax bill in Willingborough, one being county taxes and school board taxes. Uh, the school board increased their appropriations to their tax bill that to the tune of $5 million this year. So that is going to be a substantial increase to the residents' tax bills that they will see, uh, probably on the average of, of about $1,000. But they really need to understand that that is not the council that is doing this. That is the result of, of actions taken by the school board, which are just out of your control. So when, when people see their bills, it's not the council. You, I can't tell you enough because you already know that you know we are doing everything that we can to to reduce spending, um, and and for the benefit of the taxpayer. So I just wanted to make that clear. No, and I appreciate that statement, and we'll probably have to reiterate it over the course of the rest, you know, over and over, probably every meeting, because it's going to come up, um, obviously. And I do appreciate, you know, the work that the administration has done um, to really hone in and, you know, cut where we need to cut and invest where we need to invest, because, you know, we do need, we still have investments to make, we have infrastructure um, things that we need to accommodate and, you know, certain activities that we still have to um, fund. But I am very grateful for everyone's, you know, and that's that's every um, department that has worked hard to try to uh, make sure their budget is tight. So definitely appreciate that. Madam Mayor. Yes. At the last meeting, you asked the manager to work harder. He worked hard and came back with a penny. You want to try it again this week? <laughs> I can work hard, but I can't work magic. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to look. No, but thank you, but thank you. That, it was, it was very good. In the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's, where's Ms. Diggs? Okay, I see <laughs> No, but definitely, that's. I mean, a penny sounds like a little bit, but that's hard work um, with a municipal budget. That is really impressive so thank you all right moving on to our treasurer for approval and adoption no treasurer's report this evening i think we need to get uh, oh, there's no treasurer report okay thank you all right you need a motion for approval of minutes i'm sorry is there a motion to approve the minutes for March the 5th, 2024 and March 19th, 2024? So moved. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Anderson, seconded by Dr. Worthy. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? Yes. And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. All right, and you can um, do your updates. Just a few um, updates for the clerk's office for the month of March. Between mercantile licenses and requests for 200 foot list, we received a total of 10, um, totaling $177.35. We also received in the clerk's office 21 dog licenses for a total of $512. And there were a total of 54 overs submitted for the month of March. That's all for this evening. Um, can you just give us an update on the rabies clinic? Are the we, are we yes. For that? Yes. The rabies clinic, um, the flyer is posted on the township website. You have to click on, I was advised, the calendar to actually see it. It will be held May the 8th, 2024, between 4 and 7 p.m. And where is this at? No, you said Mill Creek Park. Park. Yes. All right. And can we just make sure that's on our social media? Just and if it is, it's fine. I just didn't see. I just want to make sure um, people are aware that um, we are hosting the rabies clinic and everything is in order for that with the county. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, also, I just want to make sure the financial disclosures are done 
yes. um, tomorrow for anyone who's new to any of the boards and commissions, yes. anyone that um, has not been. We'll be sending those out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else for municipal clerk updates? Okay. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, I just have a request that because the financial disclosures um, may be new to some people and they're not anticipating it's coming mm -hmm. and they don't know that it's due, if you don't get them via email, if you would please follow up with phone calls. Phone calls. And okay. if there are people you can't reach, please, you know, let us know. Let us figure out how we can get in touch yeah. with them mm -hmm. because it's a really short turnaround and some people don't even know that they need to do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, moving on to unfinished business. Does council have any, does anyone have anything for unfinished business? No? Okay, anything for new business? You no, know, I always yeah. got something. <laughs> it's gonna be a novel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Deputy Mayor, thank you. Go ahead. All right, I've, I've been, uh, the mayor and I have had conversations with uh, the manager in regards to uh, the ideal of doing a golf tournament the school district just held a golf tournament, which was very successful. Um, we wanted to do it as a joint venture with the three major entities in town. Uh, but unfortunately, one of the entities, uh, is the dynamics will not work at this current time. So I would just like to ask the council if we can just approve moving forward, getting some additional information as we prepare to take on this endeavor. And to that point, earlier in uh, Mr. Harris's comments, he mentioned the 501c3. Um, at one point, it was talked about establishing one, but the work that goes into it is a bit much. So the ideal, if we can look at partnering with some 503c's like TD Bank, Habitat for Humanity, you know, start to explore other 501c's that meet we might want to partner with to be able to take on some of these donations and benefits and so forth as we prepare for this upcoming fundraiser. Um, Yes, if we if we can just support giving direction to the manager, you know, we can continue to move forward to look into this. I support looking into it. Um, I think partnering with an established 501c3 like TD Banks Foundation or Habitat, if they're open to it, I think would be great. Um, and I would like to see um, the funds go to um, to support our students within our Willingboro community. We have students that attend um, various schools. They're, they live in Willingboro, but we have students that go to Girard College, they go to Northern Burlington, they're at West Tech, Medford. Um, and so I would like to see, and in Willingboro, of course, but I would like to see us be able to create some kind of um, fundraising arm to be able to award scholarships um, or book scholarships or offset um, some of those financial hardships as students are moving you know, out of high school. Okay, yes. And with the, um, so far, the WMUA signed on along with the township. So the next step would be to put a committee together. Mm -hmm. And these would be the conversations of how these dollars would be allocated, being that we're entering into it with another entity. Yes. So we can have these conversations definitely at the table. Thank you. Um, also, I would like for council to consider moving forward with conversations regarding the golf course and allowing them to have a liquor license. So they, from the inspections department, they met the uh, CO compliance of 150 seats, I believe by, I think it's like 360. Um, and speaking with the attorney earlier today regarding the um, banquet hall facility, it also includes catering of which they do. So they met that requirement. So I would just like for us to look at moving forward to see how much a license would actually go for, do some due diligence. Uh, I believe this golf course has two other golf course that they are, have some type of ownership interest in. So we can start shopping around to see what a license would go for, just so that we can continue these conversations. I support that. I also support that. All right, so three for three. I got one more. <laughs> um, finally, <laughs> at the last meeting, um, I indicated we received a letter from the Democratic Club regarding Ms. Lizzie Morris, who was a matriarch of this community. Uh, the council granted approval uh, to move forward, provided that the requirements are met through the petition process. But in addition to that, um, Ms. Lizzie, as I indicated, uh, started the was one of the founders of the Powell Baseball League. Um, I had an opportunity to see Mr. Johnson over at McDonald's, and he was throwing some ideas at me. And with those, I just wanted to bring back to see if we had an opportunity to name a ballpark in her honor. So as we started looking at the different ballparks that had names associated with, 
uh, one came back that didn't have a name, which was Sportsman Field. So I would like to get the support of council that if we can, you know, name that uh, and uh, Lizzie Morris Memorial Field, if no one objects, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Sportsman, where's that? Beverly Rancocas. Okay. Yeah, by the by the church. The, the, yes. Yes. So I would love that support if I can get that. I support that. Can I get another? <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. All right. Can I, I get support. an amen? Can I get an amen? There we go. Thank you guys. Good job, Deb. All right, that's it. <laughs> Is there any other any other business for new business? Um, I just would like, um, and I'm not asking for support yet until um, we hash it out. Um, we are currently working with our economic development team. Um, I think we have a great group um, this year, um, but we're looking to expand um, our economic development input. So we're looking to find some spaces in the JFK Center or and or in the municipal building for people when they come in, they can, you know, we have a map or something that draws them to this wall. Um, for economic de development and get their ideas on what they would like to see in Willemboro. Um, so I haven't talked to you about space or anything um, in any of these buildings, but um, I just want to put it out there for now that we are seeking some space just to, um, with, with good foot traffic that we can get, even if it's temporarily, but just to get some more input from the residents as they go into these spaces um, of what they would like to see um, in Willingboro like a vision board of some sort. Um, so just put that into mind, but I need, but we want it to be, you know, where there is some foot traffic um, and interactive wall. And, and we'll, you know, we'll discuss it further. We're having meetings every two weeks, I think now with the economic development. So we'll have further, um, further um, direction. Right. Yeah, because I think this is where people come. So, um, and the library, and I'll ask the library, you know, I'll ask for their um, input also. I think those would be, you know, good three spaces where people, you know, go. Um, so if there's, you know, I'll ask for support later, but, you know, I just wanted to put that on the table. All right, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, is there anything else? For All right, so we're down to public comment. You have four minutes. If there's any questions or concerns, please state your name and address for the record. Public comment is now open. Good evening, Council. I should have gotten up before when the um, engineer or whoever it was, P Pinoni was here, but nobody asked me to tell him what I thought. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, this is the time, Ms. Matt. Okay, well, you'll listen, I know. I was so happy to hear you talk about the sound system because that's one of the most important things going into that building. Mm -hmm. For 48 years, we have been going to Willingboro High School and you all know what a terrible sound system it is. Mm -hmm. We have put, I don't know how many times we've changed it. I don't know how many times people have affairs there, including the superintendent of schools. I saw one report that he had spent $30,000 on speakers mm. for one night. Mm. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know, something has to be done because if the sound system isn't right, that building will never survive in that again. And I thought we were ready to open that this year. Right. Yeah, we did too. So what's the target date now? And I don't know why not. We'll let you know. Okay. Enough said, you know how I feel about that. And we finally got this set straightened out, this sound system. Thank you, Walter, for doing that. Although I have still have trouble hearing you all because you don't like to have the mics near you. People don't like to talk into the mics. I know that, I don't myself. <clears throat> okay, the second thing is the turf, which I guess comes under your department with the budget. <laughs> We've talked about turf before. Um, this is the last article I have on the turf fields from the Enquirer. 
and says the risks associated with the artificial fields, which contain chemicals linked to cancer, asthma, and other health issues, are not worth the benefits. Ban turf fields in city parks. Um, I'll leave this with the clerk, and she can make copies for you all. I did notice, though, going out to West Hampton the other day, everybody looks at that and says it's so wonderful out there, and it is. All of those fields are not turf fields. The football field is a regular field because that's where a lot of the injuries happen. Uh, okay, the last thing I wanted to say was uh, that concerning Lizzie Morris, a few years ago when we talked about redoing the um, cafeteria into the banquet hall, it was mentioned then that that be named the Lizzie and Wesley Morris um, memorial room or whatever because of their involvement with the police department and all of the food baskets that they used to give out. So just another way to look at it. Okay, thank you. Good evening again, Marcus King, um, 135 Turing to Lane. Three things I want to talk about um, when um, the gentleman was talking about change orders. Can somebody look to see if there's additional cost when you have change orders? Because most contractors will, will stick it to you when it comes to change orders. Um, and also, I'd be curious to know the original contract of the speakers that you had versus the ones that you're recommending and in and, and the cost. So... Somebody could look into that. That'd be great. And I'll volunteer if you'd like me to. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow night, we talked about taxes. Tomorrow night, the school board is having their special meeting um, at 6 o'clock. So anybody that hears me, please come out. Because the last time they talked about the school budget, um, there were two people in the room. And one of the things that they talked about was um, that every school needed a new roof. Every one of them. And so I'm, I'm curious to find out what they're going to do with their capital budgets going forward, because that's going to impact taxes going forward. And you're right, Mr. Administrator, in terms of um, taxes, there are quite a few things um, that go into that um, that you do get blamed for. That's what happened. You sit in the big chair. Um, lastly, I had the pleasure of going to Wildwood um, this, uh, this Sunday, where the cheerleaders of the recreation um, came back grand champions. I also had the opportunity to go to Atlanta, where again, they won grand champions. I'd like to know if there's a way we can have a area where we can put up their trophies and awards, because those kids really need to see themselves. They represented Willingboro unbelievable, and you've been very proud of them. And so I'm hoping that somebody could give me um, the wherewithal of how to recommend um, somewhere in the town where we can post those um, those trophies and banners that they won so they can see themselves. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gary Johnson, 54 Gramercy Lane. Don't get old, there's no future on it. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I'm a bit of a skeptic. So while I want to thank you very much for having the brief presentation by CarMax, because it's nice to let the public know and, and be prepared to participate in discussions like this. Uh, I am spectacle of, but I respect hearing on the proposal. Anyhow. Uh, one thing that keeps coming into my mind is there is a project ongoing over in Burlington Township on what I believe over there is Salem Road of apartment buildings. Now, I know that you are looking into all kinds of projects for the former uh, marketplace, but wouldn't that be a, a, a place for multi-family units to go into there, uh, which would bring more housing, uh, housing and, and more residents and, and Yes, it would be an increased traffic, but it's not only the type of increase in traffic, it's what kind of traffic. And I don't think we really want the big tractor trailers 
the car should be bad enough. Um, the one other thing, and I hate to be a, a killjoy, but with regard to the performance center and in, in even applies a little bit to the turf field. That's great because I'm one who would like to have nothing but the best for Willingboro. I'd like to have Willingboro to be the shining light in the state of New Jersey. But to some extent, I have to ask, are we going to have the performances and the usage of it that would justify the expense? We're spending a lot of money. And people right now, have been, I know, we're keeping the budget down. We've cut it down by a penny. Hallelujah. Bless you. But Keeping it down, uh, we're still talking about spending a heck of a lot of money. I think we need to provide a justification for it. I, it, you know, if we have it there, I'm a fervent supporter for it. But I want to see it supported, and I want to make sure that if we have this turf field, that we're not doing some substantial harm to the economy. Because I also happen to be a member of the environmental committee, so I try to keep track of these things. So. Uh, if we could do that. And so thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, Shirley Dilworth. Good evening again, everyone. Uh, Shirley Dilworth, Newport Lane. Uh, I just have a few comments, but my uh, very first comment is to say how very disappointed I am that I was missed at the last council meeting. My hand had been raised, and so I don't know, you know how I was missed, but I did not have an opportunity you know, to present on the comments that I wanted to make at the last meeting. So going forward, I hope whoever's in charge of that will take a little bit more time to uh, be, to look around to see that everyone's hand has been acknowledged and no one is being omitted. The other two comments is, uh, this first comment is something that I wanted to, you know, just present at the last meeting. But I wanted to give kudos to the community for our outstanding participation in the county recycling program. Okay. Uh, in the year of uh, 2023, and I know the report has been out uh, maybe for a few months, Willenbar should be very proud of itself because of, of our participation in the, the county recycling program. Now, as you know, there are, I think, 40 or 41 townships okay, in Burlington County. And out of the 41 townships, Willenburg came in number four. That's impressive. That is, And we should pat ourselves on the back. And so I'd like to continue to encourage the, um, the members of the township, you know, to keep recycling because it is a wonderful thing. Uh, the last comment that I like to make is about the uh, property reassessment that Mr. Harris has been talking about. I do have some uh, concerns about that. And my concern is that as properties are being reassessed in the township, they, I, I hope the process of reassessing properties does not calls members of our community, okay, put members of our community in the position where they cannot or no longer be able to afford, okay, their properties. Okay, oftentimes when property is being redeveloped or reassessed, okay, we have to be concerned about the process of gentrification. So uh, Mr. Harris okay, and council members, we're depending on you to look out for us and to make sure that everything is going right for us okay, and that we are not being taken advantage of. And I know you say that this is a state initiative being okay, administered through the county. Uh, but uh, again, 
we are the, we're dependent on you, okay, to look out for us, for the members of uh, this community. Thank you so much, and I appreciate everything that all of you do. Thank you, Ms. Dilworth. All right, Maddie Mallory. Good evening, Maddie Mallory, Hudson Place. And um, I'm concerned again about um, the uh, speed of the traffic on Charleston Road between Kennedy Way and Van Sciver. Um, yesterday was a nice day and I was outside with uh, several of my neighbors and one particular neighbor that lives right next to Charleston Road. And we were out there looking at some things and talking and um, people just don't realize that the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. And uh, on several occasions, uh, you know, we yelled at people speeding. And, you know, we did have the monitor there for a short period of time, but I think we need to look at other ways that we can um, influence or enforce that 25 speed. Now on Salem Road, going through Burlington, um, I noticed that once you leave Burlington Township and get into the part that's called Burlington City, behind their 25 uh, mile an hour speed signs, they have like a yellow metal uh, sign behind that, which automatically, um, you know, brings to your attention. I think we need more 25 mile an hour signs on that stretch of Charleston Road because it is residential. Now from uh, Van Skyver, no, from Kennedy Way to Veterans, um, it's different because all the residents, their backs are to Charleston Road. But once you leave Kennedy Way and going to Van Skyver, you have strictly residential where houses are facing Charleston Road. And this is a real problem. And we have children, that uh, play on the sidewalks. We have quite a few children in this area. And as I said yesterday, I mean, we couldn't believe the speeds of vehicles and also the uh, county bus. I mean, the speed that they come through there. And it's like from uh, Van Skyver to Kennedy Way, there are two signs that say 25 miles an hour. One is as soon as you turn onto Charleston Road at Haskell, and the other one is right by my street, Hudson Place. And other than that, there are no other signs that indicate the speed limit. So I think that, you know, we're gonna have a problem in the summer when kids are out there playing and people are speeding through doing 45, some of them maybe 50 miles an hour. Um, the other thing is I noticed the grass cutters were out yesterday or the day before. And um, there was quite a bit of grass that was uh, thrown to the curb. And so I'm wondering when are we going to see the uh, sweeper um, to clean up some of this grass that is being cut and left on the streets. And I think that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, Ms. Mallory. All right, Tarina Williams. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Tarina Williams, 8 Botany Circle. First, I wanna say, um, Special thanks to Mr. Harris for the thorough report, followed by Ms. Jackson for giving us a breakdown of upcoming events. I love and appreciate all the good work that not only our council does, but different departments throughout the township um, commemorating different times in history and different um, 
uh, awareness months that we have concerning, for example, youth um, volunteer, national volunteer month with the volunteer fair coming up and Earth Day and so on and so forth. Um, thank you to Captain Buck for the thorough report that we received. God bless the fire department and the police department for the great work that you do, helping to protect and care for our township, but also I'm just amazed every time I see an upcoming event, a community service to help the children have um, safe fun as opposed to going out and straying from what they need to do to obey the law. Um, also want to um, share that um, this Saturday we're having our annual health day at Willingboro SDA Church on 201 Veterans Parkway. Services are at 930, followed by a worship service at 11 a.m. by um, featuring our health ministry director, um, Tammy Fashinu. She's a nurse practitioner. We'll have a free lunch right after, and then in the afternoon, we're having a special suicide prevention workshop featuring speaker, guest speakers, Dr. Bobby and Ms. Thomas from the Burlington County Mental Health Department. We also have Ms. Lillian Banner, who will be speaking about the risks of and the ways that we can help treats, um, su to help prevent suicide prevention. We have our own detective, Richard, oh, I'm saying the wrong name. I'm sorry. I just lost my paper. Um, Detective. I'm sorry. He's from the our own Willingboro Township. Officer Landrum has always been so supportive of our events um, in care of the police department and he'll be coming. I know they have the event at um, the high school, but we really appreciate that a representative will be sent from the department. I see that I have too. But yes, I just want to say thanks, special thanks to everyone for their great work and service. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Oh. All right, uh, Martin Knock. Good evening again, Martin Knock from Windsor Lane. Just like a couple updates if possible. Uh, I'd like to know, um, there was a long conversation about the intersection of Beverly Rand, Cocos and Windsor. Uh, I like to, I like to thank Mr. Harris, someone came and took down or took out the uh, park identification sign, but the tree is still there. But someone, I guess it's the county or the state, came by and trimmed the entire top of the tree, thought the tree was dead. Uh, now the tree is blossoming a little bit, but still it doesn't uh, give you that line of sight that we now need because of the neighbor's fencing that went up that you could see down to the light and like to know where we are that tree removal. Number two is uh, we mentioned the reassessment and I agree that's gonna have a major impact on the community. And since it's been done over uh, four or five years, uh, there has been nothing published about which parks are going to be reassessed first. Is that going to be published uh, for us to know? Um, I like to also know um, there were several months back uh, the Avery came in and was talking about what it was going to do and everything else. I've heard no updates um, about uh, the phases of the Avery. So where are we on that? Uh, they were supposed to be building some restaurants. Um, they've been trying for years to try to turn all that land into those uh, apartment buildings. Uh, so I, you know, it's been a slow walk for at least the last six to eight years. Um, and two, I'd like, I'd like to thank Mr. Harris, since some of us no longer follow the school district as much as we should uh, in terms of the impact that their budget is going to have on our uh, overall uh, taxes, tax budget uh, as versus the township. Um, I'm hoping there's some rationality 
uh, from the, the governing body could talk to them and say, this is going to be an issue, especially where these homes are being reassessed and everything else. So if I could just get those updates on the tree, on the corner, the reassessment, and the Avery development, I would be happy. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Knott. Sharon Anderson. Uh, good evening, folks. Sharon Anderson, 7 Bellhurst Lane, also a founding member of Borough Pet Project, a grassroots advocacy group. I wanted to let everyone know that we will be at the rabies clinic again this year, giving out free ID tags for their pets. You do not have to come for the rabies shot. This is for anyone in town, anyone in Willingboro. You can get a free engraved tag that you'd spend $16 for at uh, PetSmart. Um, the reason why this is really important is in the two years that I've been uh, working through Burrow Pet Project, of all the pets and all the strays and all the lost dogs, one had an ID tag, one. It would be so easy to bring a dog home or a cat even, but if you want to put an ID tag on them, it'd be so easy to bring them home if we just had the phone number. Um, we do have a microchip reader that we use and we can check the registration. Unfortunately, too many pets don't have microchips and too many people don't update their phone numbers. If you have a pet that has a microchip, be sure that you have your current number there. So um, I, I, I realized uh, listening to uh, uh, Director Bucks that we've not given any numbers. And so just a little update is that in, in the last year, we've matched two first families and four forever families who were going to have to rehome their dogs. And instead of going through the shelter, we helped them do an, a direct adoption where they knew the family that was taking their dog. Um, I do have one dog that's going to be available next week. So watch our Facebook page. We have had three strays and two surrenders adopted in partnership with either the shelter or Burlington County Animal Alliance. We have neutered four indoor cats for seniors who could not afford to have their, their cats uh, neutered. Um, we've gotten great help from Dr. Karawacki at Willingboro Vet. I believe she'll be the vet doing the rabies clinic. And she has donated her time to us, um, which has been really wonderful. We've had seven kit kittens go to adoption through the Cats Meow in Burlington County Animal Shelter. We currently have one mama and two kittens. Um, the kittens will be ready in two months or in a month. Um, and they're in a foster home. Seven times we've helped with lost dog and cat outreach. Um, probably more than that, but those are the ones I remember. Um, three found dogs were reunited with their families rather than having to call the animal control officers after hours. If you call after hours, the town has to pay overtime. The pup gets taken to a noisy, dark kennel, and the family gets stressed until they can pick up the dog the next morning. Um, by us just holding the, the pup, they're able to re re reunite it, and we reunite at any time. 11 o'clock, 1 a.m., doesn't matter. But we do do it with the cooperation of the police so that we're very sure the dogs don't end up in the wrong hand. Um, I don't have the number right now, but our cat goddess working with the cat's meow, last I knew, had worked uh, trap new to return 35 cats. So um, we've been kind of busy and um, we are looking forward to the rabies clinic again this year. I do have one request and that is we have a contract with the animal control officers and it would be really wonderful if that contract would include them posting found dogs that are going to, and cats that go to the shelter. Because if we post them, people can go get them quickly. Now, I know that the company is going to say, we got lots of towns, we got lots of things to do. Well, they're working for us. We got Time is up. we pay them. Thank you. Time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson.
uh, Beulah Williams. Good evening, Mayor McIntosh, Deputy Mayor Anderson. Oh, um, Councilman Whitfield, it's good to see you back. You weren't here for, I guess, a couple of times. So we're glad you're here. Um, and Dr. Worthy, good evening. I see Miss um, Perone is not here. I hope she's well. Um, thank you, Council. You, I appreciate you all. You know, you're doing an awesome job. And I like how you work together to advance um, Deputy Mayor's initiatives. So it's all for the good of the community because he has a caring heart. You all help to advance it. So good, very good. And of course, I appreciate Mr. Harris, the thorough work he does for the community. Yeah, I appreciate all of you. So God bless you. Um, I wanted to mention um, Detective Richard Cook, Cuff is Cook. How do you pronounce his name? Anyway, C O U P E Cook. Yeah, Detective Richard Cook. My daughter forgot his name, so I wanted to give him the respect. You know, we appreciate him devoting his time to help and um, spread the awareness of you know this horrible subject. You know, um, suicide. You know he. We'll have a wealth of knowledge to share with the participants. And I just want to thank him and, you know, um, praise the police department. You know, they're always so helpful. They're always there to, you know, lend a helping hand to make our community a richer place. I praise this fire department, the EMS. I praise all of you. All of you deserve, you know, praise instead of, nitpicking, you know, to say you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you know, to me, you, you do, you're do you doing right, and the Lord is blessing you, and I thank you all. I hope I said everything. God bless you. And um, on, on Saturday, I know that you have a full schedule. It's our Sabbath. Otherwise, you'll be out there helping as well. So um, keep up the good work for the community. We love you. God bless you. Um, <laughs> okay, did I, Terina is saying, did, didn't I say where we, where I live? We're in Bar, um, Botany just... Circle, Botany Circle, <laughs> right? Didn't I say that? She said I didn't. So, so, so um, any part of the initiative, the, um, the Health Day that you want to participate? If some people are out there and they can't attend the worship service, um, and they want to have a lunch, come and have lunch. Just, you know, just come and have lunch. And um, the workshop is two to four, but you're welcome. Any part of the day you can come, just come on over. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we have the Zoom ID, which is 8710209522. Passcode is Adventist. And I just want to send um, that we appreciate our host church um, St. Paul's, they have a wonderful pastor, at, you know, um, Reverend Gerald, a nice lady. So God bless you. I'll talk you enough. Amen. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night, Miss Williams. Thank you. You're welcome, Mayor. All right. Is there anyone else for public comment? All right. Public comment is now closed. All right, Mr. Harris. Um, so I'm gonna start with Miss Mack. Um, we agree with the sound system. I think we need a good one. So we're gonna have to figure out how we're going to make this work and figure out, you know, what the quality of what they offered already, you know, how that would affect um, what we're trying to accomplish for a state of the art theater. Um, also the turf fields. Um, we'll get copies of that and read through that, and that's that it that will. We will um, consider that input when determining, you know, if and when we go forward with the turf field. Um, so I appreciate that information. Um, Mr. King, um, Mr. Harris, can we talk about, can we look into the Willenboro Rec for, you know, our championships, our sports, celebrating, you know, our wins, our huge wins. 
Oh, we do have something. So, a trophy yeah. case. Okay. So can we just, um, you know, liven that back up and get that in a place where people see and, you know, they do know they're appreciated and seen and, you know, we're proud of them. Just want to, you know, do that. And I guess is council okay with that? Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Johnson's car, um, comment about the CarMax. Um, again, we were just bringing them forward just to present. I, none of the council, you know, had um, offered any opinion on it or anything. They just came to us and wanted to present to the um, community just for transparency. And again, um, when we talk about it, we'll definitely, you know, include the input of our residents. And I think, you, you know, everyone made some great points to consider. Um, also, you know, we could look at the, the um, housing. Uh, we have a little bit of difficulty only because it stresses the community. We're trying to get some more um, economic development and, you know, things that we can help, um, you know, manage taxes. So the housing, you know, especially senior housing, you know, we're looking into, but we just still have to be deliberate in what we're with the limited space that we have um, for commercial or retail. Um, and to your point, justifying the usage, usage of money, I mean, we've been working hard and I'll say, you know, kudos to Dr. Worthy, who's been, really been um, having an eagle eye <laughs> on, on the spending, but making sure that our amenities are top of the line. I think we do deserve it and then we can afford it. Um, without um, a huge impact to the taxes because we have planned accordingly over the years to fund certain things. Um, so I do think it's important to balance, you know, the quality of our amenities, you know, with the cost. So I, I, I will say that, you know, we have the right person on the job looking at it um, and really making sure that we're um, quote unquote scrappy in our spending. But you know, not having a cheap product on the end. Um, and I appreciate you bringing up the environmental stressors on the turf field. Um, I think that's another thing that we really have to consider and we will be tapping into um, our environmental commission also um, and getting their input because they have been studying this too. Um, so I think it was a good point that you brought up about the, you know, environmental stressors. We have to make sure we keep on top of um, that situation. Miss um, Dilworth indicated that she's proud of the particip participation of the recycling program. Do you had? Did you get that information? That okay. <laughs> okay. So I mean, I think if if that's something, we we definitely want to um, make sure that's said and published. You know, publicized. Um, so, I, so that we can keep that momentum going. I have not seen that report, Matt, but I will look for it. You'll look for it. Okay, got it. <laughs> and we're going to have to do, we're going to have to talk about this tax reassessment again. Um, and just clarification, I think that can kill um, two birds with just an explanation, um, re-explanation on that. So I actually had a conversation with the uh, assessor today. Um, you know, this is going to be a a reassessment over a five year period um, as far as you know what parks are going to tackle and when I can ask him to put together a schedule. Um, however, uh, there is a notification that goes out to residents when they are, are beginning to do work in a, a particular park. I believe now they are in Garfield East. Um, uh, he, we did at your request uh, prepare some documentation to be posted on the website. Uh, it's a, a frequently asked questions, very thorough explanation of the process, the end result, and the reality is at the end of this process, which I believe is slated to be completed in 2020, 2028, um, some properties taxes will go up, some properties taxes will remain stable, some property taxes will go down. Um, so, uh, you know, but but we will do, uh, are working very efficiently to make sure that the, the assessments are not outrageous. And we do have the ben benefit of working with our tax assessor who has been with Willingboro for a very long time uh, through this process. And he is aware of the limits 
uh, you know, that the municipality can can take, I guess you would say. So he's just not going to go out and just put a hard number without taking all things into consideration. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, for Mr. Mallory, still concerns about the speeds, you know, in JFK, Charleston. Um, and I, she she did mention some some Charleston Road. Okay. Um, is there something we can do for the speed calming? You know, people are speeding through the township, and we just we just need some assistance just to squelch it somewhat. Yes. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I I will have those appropriate conversations with Captain Buck. Okay. Um, and, you know, we have been talking about um, very detailed thorough plans regarding uh, traffic in, in the township, but we're not ready to unfold that to the council as of yet. But we're looking at uh, some things that could be more uh, permanent solutions to these problems throughout the community. And then is there, is there a time, when when do you plan to present to <laughs> When we have all of the details kind of no, lined up. Year, right? and, no, not next year. Second before, meeting in May. Before the summer's over? No. <laughs> Second meeting in May. We're just trying to get an idea. I mean, don't put on me. No, I, <laughs> I, don't want to, I don't want to give you any false expectations. Uh, we're talking about it, and you know, when we get the all the the eyes dotted and T's crossed, then we'll be ready to to present it to the government. Right, but can you give us an update on where you're at on the yes. timeline? The next, just make sure that's on the um <laughs> next. <laughs> just update. Just, update. just say, hey, we're working on it. You know, okay. it's a, it's on the top of our mind. You know, okay. still, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Speed. Um. Also. <laughs> also, the glass clippings. Um. You know, what's the, do we have a schedule for the sweeper throughout town? Yeah, the sweeper has has been been out almost every day, uh, out and about in the community. Um. So they are uh, sweeping all of our streets. Um. The cutters have been out cutting, and the sweepers have been out sweeping, or the sweeper has been out sweeping. And uh, we're still waiting on the delivery of our, our our second sweeper that's out for repair. And uh, and then when it gets it, we'll have that sweeper out sweeping too. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, we had Miss Williams, both Miss Williams. And, you know, thank you. You know, so the council, I say the governing body, we do appreciate the kudos that we get and the positivity um, that you provide every meeting. So I just want to um, just say thank you for that. Um, for Mr. Knock. Um, can you give an update on the tree removal? We have contracted for the removal of that tree. Um, it, it's, it's in process, um, and, and it will be happening in, I would, I would say, in a week or so. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm also the, um, where do we net out for the Beverly, Rancocas, and Windsor in the intersection? I know we did discuss that. Did we? Did we come to it? We came to a conclusion. The county is still uh, in the drawing board about uh, installing that blinking light there. Okay. Um, but that's you know the county's work. We'll we'll stay on top of them as as well. Okay. And just you know, I guess yeah, just make sure there's um, clear visibility. Um, you know, at the intersection, it does get a little crazy over there. Um, in terms of the Avery. Um, they have presented on multiple occasions, you know, what they're trying to do. We're still, there's still no real agreement. Um, council did give the okay to pursue what they were mm -hmm. offering, but we're now, we're still in the middle. Um, you know, we're going to discuss it actually in executive session, but um, I have nothing else to add to it. Hopefully we can, I can um, give you an update at the next meeting. But as of now, we're still trying to work some things out with them. And I think, is there anything else? Oh, and then Ms. Anderson, thank you um, for providing uh, the residents with uh, the benefits of the borough prep, pet project. Um, do appreciate that. Is there anything else? And just a reminder, at the they, they will be giving out free tags for your dogs or cats um, at our rabies clinic. 
And I think that I have a, you know, tag on my dog. So it, it's actually a good, a, a great benefit, um, even if you don't get the rabies shot. So please make sure if you have a pet, you do attend our rabies clinic. And what date is that again? May the 8th. May the 8th, for the 4 to 8 p.m. to 7 To 7 p.m. at Mill Creek Park. And is there anything else, anything I miss? Okay, moving on to council comments. Does any council have any comments tonight? Yes, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, first one is we may have to extend the meeting because yeah. of the executive. So mm -hmm. at the end, we don't want to forget that. Yep. But I just want to thank everyone for coming out. I want to wish my buddy a happy belated birthday, Mr. Dennis Tunstall. <laughs> day over happy 25. <laughs> um, congratulations again to the uh, Willingboro High School cheerleaders as well as the Panther cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. uh, the council will be recognizing them at an upcoming meeting. But as to Mr. King's uh, comments, as far as being able to be able to display their their hard work, it, it was a great suggestion. Um, da, 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 da. In the past, I know council and the school board used to do joint budget meetings, and that kind of went away. So I don't know if there's an opportunity for us to revisit that or not. But if that's something, uh, Mr. Harris, if you can just look into just to see if it's an opportunity for us to sit at a round table like we used to do. I can investigate that, but you know, a, a few years ago, the state kind of modified the way school budgets were approved and, and done, and they pretty much have control over the approval of the school budget. So, I mean, okay. we can discuss it, but I don't know what it will, what fruit it will yield. Well, uh, just from a standpoint of, you know, understanding the impact on the residents and some of the yeah. looking at best practices. And when I say best practices, as far as what the township does to prepare for future projects. So once again, conversations for whatever it may be worth to show what we're doing and how we're being able to maintain and manage. So from that standpoint, um, da, 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 da. Captain Bucks, great job on the thorough presentation. Um, wonderful. You hit every point, and I think it was very um, informative for the residents. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What else? As far as the sound system, Mr. Harris, I do remember when we had the uh, shot, shot spotter meeting, you mentioned you can find the money. Remember you said we could find oh, money? I need you to go into that treasure chest. That was, that was two years down the road, <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Hey, um, and thanks again to you and the administration on um, the hard work finding that extra one cent for a total of a two cent uh, decrease. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, thank you everyone for coming out. I did have just a few comments. One to piggyback off of Councilman Anderson's um, point about the taxes. I wanna thank Mr. Harris and the administration for all your hard work for the decrease um, in the budget for the 2024 year. But I also want to remind the residents that not just these, these meetings aren't the only meeting that your voice needs to be heard at. Um, as you felt in last year and, and may feel again um, proposed this year, the tax may be increased by the school board, um, which you know, many people don't go to those meetings unless they have children in the school district. And as was stated earlier, even at the budget meetings, there are only two or three people in the audience. So with that being said, your voice is definitely needed over there. Um, your input is needed over there. We hear you. We hear your concerns. We hear what your priorities are, are and we take um, that into consideration when doing the municipal budget, but on the um, school district side. Thank you, Councilman Anderson. On the school district side, um, there's nothing really we can do there. Um, also, just the events that are coming up, April 20th, or yes, April 20th is a big day here in Willingboro. We look forward to seeing everyone out at all of the Earth Day and community events that are happening at JFK on that day, the Kappa Classic, 
the garden opening and the community cleanup that starts at 9 a.m. So we look forward to seeing everyone there. And I know I'll be there early so I can get my Chick-fil-A sandwich and I hope I see you <laughs> there too. Uh, <laughs> and also come out on April 27th to the volunteer fair. Um, we always need more hands uh, to the plow and more ideas to the table. So we look forward to seeing you at that event as well. And that is all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, Councilwoman Whitfield. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I may be out of words for this meeting. Um, <laughs> a lot of words tonight. Um, but I just wanted to reiterate with the public that we will continue to work hard to articulate Willenboro's needs mm -hmm. and our expectations as we hold our professionals accountable. We spend a lot of money on professionals. We take great pride in the deliberation process that we go through to select those professionals and they have to be held accountable. So while it's disappointing that it's taken a bit longer for us mm -hmm. to get to where we thought we would be at this point, I think it's important that we're very deliberate um, as you all know, as we're building Willenboro for, the, for today, we're also building Willenboro for the future. Mm -hmm. And these decisions that we're making about a turf field or not, a track or not, um, how much money we spend on this performing arts center, you know, the finishings in there, the sound system are things that are going to be in there for many, many years. And so um, I hate I had to delay the meeting quite a bit. I had a lot of questions, um, but it's very different when the professionals are here in the meetings versus the emails that are flying back and forth and snarky comments on a phone call. So um, in the past, um, our past engineers joined us at almost every meeting, um, at least monthly to update the body. And I really believe that with all the work that we're investing in our engineers, that they should come and be present and update the council at, in totality, as well as the residents so that we don't keep having um, you know, points of disconnect and we're wasting time and there's money being spent. Um, I think we could benefit from that. But I appreciate everyone um, coming out this evening and um, I appreciate the work of the administration, um, seeing the tulips blossoming in the medians, rain gardens going that are done and the street sweeper and roads being redone, sidewalks. I mean, Willenboro is thriving. We have a lot of work to do, but there's so much being done right now to celebrate. So thank you yeah. to my colleagues, to the administration, um, to the residents for the work that we're doing to be one Willenboro and to move us forward. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Don't have much to say tonight. I think we did exhaust all the kudos, um, but um, thank you for coming out and participating in our civic responsibilities. This is, you know, we are the governing body, but we do are very open to what the residents want, you know. So, you know, I, I do appreciate the participation in person and online. Um, to uh, Deputy Mayor's point about the school board, um, you can look into the legality, but I think it's incumbent upon all of us all, also as the governing body to have these conversations um, in passing and, you know, on purpose. Um, so that those meetings and um, conversations will be had, um, but I can't guarantee that we can control. We cannot control, you know, what they do. That is just how it is. But um, I think we can have further conversations on aligning and what we're trying to do in Willembra as a whole. I think there's a lot of points of alignment that we could um, use, but you know, we're just going to have to work a little bit harder on those. So um, continue to love one another. We are Willenboro. We are neighbors. Um, look out for your community. Look, look out for each other and have a great night. We uh, we do have to do a motion to extend the meeting. Okay. You can you make the motion. I make a motion that we extend the meeting uh, by one hour. Okay. That's it. Not to exceed one hour, correct. Mm -hmm. Second. Roll call on that, please. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? Yes. And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. And then we do have executive session, and there may be. Yes. Uh, so executive session is needed tonight pursuant to NJSA 10 4 12 subsections B7 and 8 for matters involving contracts and matters involving personnel. And there is anticipated action tonight.
Thank you. Good night. You need a motion? Yeah. Is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Moved by Dr. Worthy, seconded by Deputy Mayor Anderson. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. No, I'm not.
Okay. Sean, are we good to go? Uh, yes, sir. We're back. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Anderson, seconded by Dr. Worthy. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson? Yes. And Mayor McIntosh? Yes. So we have resolution 2024-117, which is a resolution appointing Everett Fault as the municipal clerk for the township of Willingboro. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Anderson, seconded by Councilwoman Whitfield. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Whitfield? Yes. Councilwoman Dr. Worthy? Yes. Deputy Mayor Anderson yes. and Mayor McIntosh. Yes. I make a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in, moved by um, Councilman An Deputy Mayor Anderson, seconded by Dr. Worthy. All in favor say aye. 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 No nays. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you, everyone. It's 1053. Thank you.